means a great many things to the people in the state of Washington. And this year is certainly no exception. For the Washington Huskies, it marks the end of an era, the Kaufman era. Star running back Napoleon Kaufman will close his stellar collegiate career today here in Pullman. But Jim Lambright's Huskies are multidimensional. A tough, hard-nosed defense can put it in the end zone if you make a mistake. After a 31-19 thumping of California just a week ago, the Dogs look to close out 94 with another victory. For Washington State, this one is for momentum. Mike Price's Cougars are headed for a bowl game, and the Cougs are trying to stop a two-game skid. They'll need to put losses to Oregon State and USC behind them. A devastating defense leads the Cougar charge, but for Washington State to win, the offense will need to crank it up early. This one's for all the Apples, the Huskies, and the Cougars. Get it on next on Prime Sports Northwest. Martin Stadium in the snowy Palouse. Snow and football, that means one thing. Time for the Apple Cup. 1994, the 87th meeting between the Huskies and the Cougars. Hello, everyone. I'm Bud Namick, along with former Cougar quarterback Cleet Casper. We'll have all the action today. What can you say? If Yogi Berra were here, he'd say it's deja vu all over again with the <laughs> snow in Pullman. This game is all about pride and desire. And that's just for the people sitting in the stands. It's going to be a great football game and certainly entertaining today. I'll be like the center today in between a couple of quarterbacks and doing a lot of handing off. Sonny Sixkiller, former Husky quarterback who covers the Huskies for Prime Sports Northwest, joins us. Welcome to Pullman. Thank you very much. It's great to be here in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do this every, every did you, time. Did you bring a coat, Sonny? Uh, Huskies don't really need a coat over oh, here. Okay. We're ready to play football today. The Huskies are looking forward to it. It's got to be, maybe they can come out and win in the snow and prove all those people wrong from two years ago. That's certainly one thing the Huskies would love to do here this afternoon. Washington State would love to come up with a victory to give them some confidence as they move towards a bowl game. USC, Oregon, and Arizona atop the Pac-10. Washington State at four and three. Of course, the Huskies at four and three, seven and three overall. And this, of course, a landmark day for the Huskies because this is the final game that they will play while they're still on probation and that will mean a lot for Jim Lambright and his program to be able to put this probation behind them. Well the monkey will really be off the back then you know they spent two long hard years and I think the program needs to get back to where they are where they were they only have 15 scholarships this coming year but I'll tell you what coach Lambright will do his best to get the 15 best players he can find. And it's going to be difficult to replace one man Napoleon Kaufman playing his final college football game this afternoon 25 more yards he needs to become just the 40th player in NCAA football history to rush for 4,000 career yards. I'll tell you what, no matter where you're from, you got to admire this kind of guy. He's got great speed, great quickness, and not only that, he's just a tough nut. He is a very strong guy. He bench presses 420 pounds. I know Cleet and I never got that close, <laughs> and uh, it's just a great career for him. And then 25 more yards, and he'll reach the 4,000-yard plateau. It's been interesting to see what Napoleon Kaufman can do this afternoon. He rushed for 181 yards against the Cougars a year ago, but Washington State much better against the run this year. But, Cleet, the, the big question for Washington State is what will they do on the offensive side of the football today? Well, unfortunately, we can't bring Drew Bledsoe to repeat 92. We will, however, have Chad Davis in the lineup. There was some question about his ribs and his knee, but he is definitely going to start this contest. What Chad needs basically is a lot of help from his seniors. He needs Clay Reese to throw the great block. He needs Albert Kennedy to make the great catch in the snow for the touchdown. He needs help from everybody around him, and he can come out on top in this contest. And so that's what you got to do today to flog the dogs. <laughs> we'll see what the weather does to both offenses. We're outside, but we're fortunate we have a little shelter over our heads. We're going to go down to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen, who I hope has at least a hat on his head. <laughs> Hey, where's the uh, ski lift? This is great. Let it snow, baby. It's nasty down here on the field. A lot of snow you can see all over the place. The footing isn't all that good, but for Washington State, the Cougars like it. They're 3-0 and when it snows. The Huskies, they want to prove that they can play in this nasty weather. Watch for Washington and try to pound the ball up the middle. I think Thomas, the fullback, could have a big game. Kaufman really relies on outstanding quickness. This may take some of the strength away from Washington State's defense. Big speed. They love to run. But with a sloppy field, you got to control yourself. 
throw it back upstairs to those goofy critters in the booth. Oh boy, Paul's gonna have a lot of fun. You know, when he made the transition over from radio to television, he was told the best part about this was the clothing contract. Obviously, that didn't help Paul out on the sidelines for this one. It's gonna be fun. The Cougars and the Huskies. Hey, it's Apple Cup time. It's kinda like starting the holiday season. And everybody's singing, let it snow. Not too many people are into truck fishing. Most people still use poles. That's fine with me, but if you're after some monster fish, you gotta use one of these. A 1994 Ford Ranger 4x4. Come on, come on. Complete with push-button four-wheel drive, a nice wide stance, and a whopping four-liter V6. So sink your boat, go truck fishing, get a Ford Ranger 4x4, and get serious. Is your credit report holding you back from refinancing your home? Hi, I'm Jim Palmer. Well, if it is, call the money store. At the money store, they'll treat you like an individual. And look at your total credit history, not just today's credit report. You can apply entirely by phone at the money store, and there's never an application fee. So don't let your credit report stop you from refinancing your first mortgage. Call 1-800-LOAN-YES. The money store, where America goes for money. In a distant corner of our galaxy, an invincible alliance has been formed. Engage! Let's go! Jack in the Box and the new Paramount Motion Picture Star Trek Generations team up to give you a free Star Trek Generations Movie Collector's Cup when you galaxy-size any Supreme Value Combo. For just 39 cents more, beam up to bigger fries, a larger drink. Collect all four limited edition cups. It's a stellar deal for just 39 cents more, only at Jack in the Box. Cougar football on Prime Sport Northwest is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. America can depend on farmers. And by Sterling Savings, all the bank you'll ever need. They have had the tractors out on the turf at Martin Stadium to clear the path. For now, we can see the yard markers and the hash marks. The Huskies at 7 and 3, the Cougars at 6 and 4. Meeting number 87, the Huskies leading the series rather handily. Last year in Seattle, the Huskies 26 to 3 over the Cougars. UW has won six of the last eight meetings, but since the series has returned here to Pullman, it has been much closer. The last 12 years, it has been a fairly close series between the Cougars and the Dogs. Washington moving the ball well on the ground, number two in the Pac-10, and they can score the points. Washington State has had trouble scoring, and lately they've given up a lot of points compared to what they were early in the year, but usually you throw all that out the window, it's Cougs and Huskies and Apple Cup. Washington State won the toss, and instead of deferring, as has usually been the case this year, the Cougars elected to take the football, so a little difference. And everything's a little different when you get ready for the Apple <laughs> Cup. These folks deserve MVP awards. We'll see how long they're able to stick around in the stands. It is not pleasant whether you're a Husky mom, a Coug mom, or just a fan of either the purple and the gold or the crimson and the gray. John Wales, the booted away, former walk-on who's received a scholarship from Coach Jim Lambright, has done an outstanding job in the kicking department. 18 of 25 field goals this year, and he's made six in a row, and he's been doing a tremendous job on kickoffs, getting the ball deep and making it unreturnable. Two of the Cougar seniors from Curtis High School in Tacoma, Torrey Hunter, Singor Mobley, deep for Washington State. A very emotional moment in Martin Stadium a short while ago when they announced all the seniors playing in their final football game here in Martin Stadium. I don't know that the fans need any prompting from the scoreboard. The kickoff will go out of bounds, so Washington State will begin operations on their own 35-yard line as we get Apple Cup 94 underway. Chad Davis at quarterback, the sophomore for Washington State. Bruised ribs, a knee that has strained ligaments. Kevin Hicks will be in the backfield, the senior out of Los Angeles. Hicks, five carries for just four yards against the Huskies a year ago. The Cougars would love to get the football into the hands of Jay Dumas on a regular basis. Eric Moore, the tight end, has become really a go-to guy. Clay Reese, the senior captain, last night at the team meeting, he brought in five sets of 
jumper cables that he bought at an auto parts store, brought him in, said, fellas, we're jump-starting the offense tomorrow. We'll see what they do on first down. A little reverse to get things started. Dumas wants to throw it. Going deep for Kennedy into coverage, and he just threw it away, and it hits Lawyer Malloy in the back of the shoulder pad. Well, there's a surprise. The <laughs> Apple Cup gets underway with a trick play. We've never seen that before. The Husky defense will be set following a look at the toss by Jay Dumas, who's now one for three through the air this year. Now, quarterback would get in trouble for making that throw. Does a slot back get in trouble for making that throw? I'm just happy that uh, Lawyer didn't turn around and catch that ball and have a turnover on the first play. Cougars come out now with two tight ends. David Knuff drops back into a slot and goes in motion for Washington State. Kevin Hicks will try it on oh. the ground. He goes nowhere. Hammered by Deke Devers. Behind the line of scrimmage, loss of about a half yard on that play. And the dogs are fired up. Deke Devers, the junior out of Garfield. Steve Hoffman, David Ritchie across that front line. The linebackers, Ritchie Chambers, David Kilpatrick, Inc. Aliaga, the fine sophomore out of Honolulu. Honorable mention, all packed 10 a year ago. And Donovan Schmidt, the secondary. Reeser and Harrison, outstanding at the corners. Lions and Malloy, the safeties. Third down and 10 for Washington State from their own 35. First possession of the football game. And Davis to throw. Moore dropped the ball. Rather, Albert Kennedy, the intended receiver, had it in the bread basket and dropped it. George Martin will come on to punt for the first time. Well, there's the first evidence of uh, what type of effect this weather will have on the offense there as the receivers have to spend just that extra second looking that ball in because the hands have no feeling. Leon Neal deep to accept the punt of George Martin. Martin, 39.1 yards per kick. Washington State has done a nice job of covering punts so far this year. Good pressure, but Martin gets it away. A high hanging kick that will take a bounce and be down by Washington State. It hit James Darling, and the Huskies will have pretty good field position as they bring the offense out for their initial possession. Take a look to set the Husky offense real quick as Damon Heward comes in. The outstanding junior quarterback out of Puyallup, completing 56% of his passes, 13 touchdowns. He's been intercepted 12 times. Napoleon Kaufman, Richard Thomas in the backfield. Bruner has got more passes than any tight end in Husky history. Frank Garcia and Andrew Peterson, the two veterans on that front line for the Huskies. First and 10 from their own 33 for the Huskies. Napoleon Kaufman and a pretty good first down gain as the surge carries him out to about the 37 yard line for Washington State on defense a senior dominated group playing their final game here in Martin Stadium Dwayne Patterson the all-time sack leader at Washington State 37 and a half sacks Chad Eaton Donnie saw saw a great team in the middle Todd Shaw getting the start on the outside due to the knee injury to Dwayne Sanders the linebackers Childs Fields and Hayes Hayes bothered by a bad back during practice this week Tory Hunter, Brian Walker, the corners. Singor Mobley, John Rushing making his 45th consecutive start. Kaufman on second down, tries to straight out and has enough yardage for a first down and looked like the football came loose, but after the fact, it's a first down for the Huskies. Well, I tell you, right there you see the explosiveness of Napoleon Kaufman. And the Huskies need to do this today. They need to go north and south or east or west, whatever way this field is headed to <laughs> But uh, that's the key to their offense today is make sure that he gets some positive yardage. And so far in the two plays, they've done that. Last year, the Huskies had a lot of success with uh, the two tight end formation against Washington State in the second half of last year's game. And, and I would suspect that uh, Coach Dietrich is going to stick with that two tight end, three tight end formation probably most of the game today. Cam Cleland, the third tight end in motion. Hoffman right side and another pretty good gain on first down. And on the first couple of running plays by the Huskies, Washington State giving up some yardage because the Husky offensive line's done a nice job opening up some holes initially. Well, they've got three studs that are tight end. They're all big, they're all strong. Cam Cleland's coming back off that injury at Stanford where he got his bell rung. He didn't even know where he was for three days. And it's nice to see him back on the field today. Chris Hayes, you see there, has been bothered by a bad back, missed a couple of days of practice. Talked to him before the game, he said he'll play, but it is very sore. And I imagine it becomes tougher in this cold weather. 
Leon Neal goes in motion, lines up in the slot. We've got whistles, our first flag of the afternoon. The Oregon Ducks headed to the Rose Bowl. And they do it in fashion with a victory over Oregon State. So congratulations to Rich Brooks and his club. The only loss all year right here at Martin Stadium. Nice to see a Northwest school represented in the Rose Bowl. Anybody but us. <laughs> That's right, Cleve. <laughs> Just anybody. Even the Huskies. No, they can't go. Sorry about that. I know. <laughs> Next year, they'll be ready to go. Been a long hibernation. Jim Lambright, his second year at the helm of the Husky program, 14-7 and seven coming into this game. 1-0, and of course, in Apple Cups as a head coach. He graduated from Everett High in 1961. Mike Price graduated from Everett High School in 1964. It will be second down. And 11 as the ball is set back onto the 44 following the penalty against the Huskies. Neal in motion again to the wide receiver position. He were to throw for the first time, and he has the catch. Torrey Hunter on the coverage, the catch made by Eric Bjornsson, who was playing quarterback in this game a year ago. Well, I'll tell you what, Eric has really turned it on this season. Oh, there's the scores right there. Rose Bowl bound. Rose Bowl Ducks. Has a funny name, funny Fight. ring to it. Fighting Ducks. Good to see <laughs> USC lose to UCLA also. Got it. But Eric, I was going to say that Eric Bjornsson and Damon Hewitt have worked real hard in the offseason to get those routes down. That's been a big play for us this year, Cleek. Those quick outs, give yourself a chance for a short yardage for first down. The spot just shy of the first down marker. It's third and about a half yard. See if Hewitt will just take the snap and sneak it himself. Cougars show blitz. I think they were offside, but it doesn't matter. There was no flag thrown. And Hewitt and the Husky offensive line won the battle of the trenches on the right side, and it became about a five-yard gain on the quarterback sneak. One of the things, if you go back to the 92 game, which had similar situation as far as the environment, most of the scoring was done down on the left hand of your screen today where the wind is behind your back, and I think the Huskies really need to take advantage of the wind behind their back and get a score early because as we saw in that game in 92, Bledsoe and the, the, the Cougar offense was much more effective going toward the left side of the screen. Mike Price, the head coach of the Cougars, on the sidelines. He's watching him with a first down. Looks like Hoffman to the left side. And again, he's able to slip a tackle and a good first down gain. And that is so important. The Huskies have had some nice second down play calls. Well, it's really a key. You want to you want to get yourself in a position to be second and five. You don't want to get yourself in a position by throwing a ball, being incomplete on first down, and give yourself a second and long, and then come up with two yards. Coaches drive them nuts when they have to constantly have third and eight. Nice. Good, good cut right there, Cleet. Nice cut and also a good extra effort there by uh, Big Peterson, the, the tackle. He was on the ground and still got a piece of uh, Childs, and Childs was trying to scrape off and make the tackle, so good extra effort by the big kid. Coffin, Coffin now with 23 yards on the ground, and with this carry, if he picks up two, and it looks like that's about what he got, he now has 4,000 career rushing yards. A fantastic career for Napoleon Kaufman out of Lompoc, California. And we'll let him have that record. If he <laughs> just would uh, end it right there, we'd be <laughs> real happy. I know. The, the crowd went crazy when they made the tackle on Napoleon on the play, but he still gained enough yardage to pick up first down, which is about four yards. Well, uh, that's if you believe these uh, referees that we've re <laughs> recruited from uh, right here in the Palouse. Well, you know, you got to think positive, right? <laughs> you have to when you're when you're in Martin Stadium and 37,000 people hate your guts. That's right. Well, and it is enough for a first down, so good eyesight by Sonny. Napoleon Coffin has just passed Joe Washington of Oklahoma. Next up on the list, Darren Nelson, as he tries to step his way forward. Napoleon's been bothered by turf toe. They've got a special gel cap that they use over the toe. He is running on turf, but basically he's running on ice, so you have to wonder what that feels like. Well, a turf toe is a really tough injury. They just, it, it just hangs with you. It doesn't go away. It takes a lot of time, and uh, unfortunately, he's running well today. Or fortunately, I should say. That a baby, Sonny. We got you, con <laughs> we got you converted already. <laughs> First and 10, Cockman tries the right side. Shoe tackle made by Dwayne Patterson. Senior out of McClyman's High School in Oakland, California. What a career he's had. Came here, didn't know if he's going to be a tight end or a defensive end. He leaves as the all-time sack leader at Washington State. And that's a record I got a feeling is going to hang in there for a while. Might be a couple decades before that's threatened. 
great career, Dwayne Patterson here, and I'd like to see him finish it off with another win. Although he's got a bowl game after this to play. Eight offensive plays for the Huskies. Napoleon Kaufman has carried the ball six times. Will we see number seven here? Heward will throw it this time. If he can get it away, he does, and the pass is incomplete. He intended it for Bjornsson, but great pressure from the outside by Mark Fields. And, Sonny, I don't know if you ever have a linebacker with the speed of Mark Fields coming in on you when you're trying to throw. I'll tell you what, that guy is, a, is an outstanding football player. You see it right here. Actually, it, I'm not sure who made the initial hit there, but, but Fields is an outstanding. He's big, he's fast, and he's the kind of guy, Cleet, I know, that you don't want him to give a free run and hit you. Uh, I never wanted the kicker to get a free run. <laughs> <laughs> that was rushing the free safety coming on the free safety blitz there and, and getting in Heward's face. Here's a big series now for the defense. One of try to at least force a field goal attempt. Husky's got the snap off in time. There is a flag. Heward hammered as he lets it go. Let's see if they saw some movement by the Huskies or did Washington State jump the gun a bit? The Huskies believe it's on the Cougars. It looked like the left side of the defensive line, Patterson and crew were, were just leaning over the neutral zone and that's what uh, the referee has called the day. So unfortunately, on this time, you'll see that the guy's just leaning over the ball and there's a foot in the neutral zone. Might have been Fields getting his, his foot just stuck in there and uh, whether it's an inch or a foot, that's all that matters. You see uh, Damon Heward getting roughed up, and believe me, that's another message the Cougars want to send, that even if you do get time to throw it, we're going we're gonna to try to get in your face and, and punish him. Hey, even with those flak jackets on, Cleet, those still pound up on you. Third down and call it two for the Huskies now. Play fake. They do hand it to Napoleon Kaufman, and he has the first down to keep the Husky drive alive. So the penalty was a big one. Coming into the ball game, I noticed the Cougars had about 20 more penalties than the Huskies did. And again, that was a key penalty in favor of the Huskies. Napoleon defying the elements by not wearing the long sleeve shirt. And you can see some of the fertilizer that they <laughs> put on the field here to keep the snow off, kind of filling up on his arms there. But it takes a lot of guts <laughs> just to come out here without a t-shirt on. Well, those are pretty good sized pins he's got on their shoulders. He and Mark Bruner going without the sleeves underneath. Huskies have had the ball for a while. Hoffman again, outside, inside the 10, pushed out of bounds by John Rushing, but it should be enough for another Husky first down. The offensive line has come out trying to prove a point here. They want Napoleon to go out successful. He's just a tough kid. You'll see here, Cleet, that uh, the blocking up front, giving him an open lane, and his speed, pure speed, got him to the outside. Did a nice job of bouncing it outside. You can see he reads the block of Thomas, who pins in Chris Hayes, and that's Chris Hayes' hole. And then it's one-on-one, -on -one, just getting to the sideline, just enough to pick up the first down. So they're inside the 10-yard line, first and goal. An 11-play drive for the Huskies. Kaufman has carried it eight times for 44 yards. It's Neal in the backfield now, giving Napoleon a break. Neal left side, he's got an angle to the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. celebrates so does the button on sunny six killers lapel well i hope that's the last time we hear the button <laughs> i think it will be the batteries it's were just obnoxious out enough to have leon score but uh, you can tell there's a lot of good blocking going on and you have to give credit to the two tight end formation there is not going to hold there bruner with a nice block on the on todd shaw to, to really spring that John Wales to attempt the extra point 25 out of 27 on the year gets it up and missed it right well, that is something we might see a lot of. The kicking game, never a lot of fun in a situation like this. We'll see if that becomes a factor. It's the Huskies six, the Cougars nothing. With 8.50 remaining in the first quarter, you're watching Pac-10 football on Prime Sports Northwest. The world of Makita design. Innovating. Always a leader. So how do you make the best even better? Throw away the key. Makita. Available for Christmas at all Lumberman's locations. Start.
an adventure. Nightline's personals will take you there. Hello. I'm glad I caught you. You have definitely caught me. How's 523 Beach Drive? 20 minutes. You got 10. I'm on my way. Listen to ads or leave your own. Retrieve messages from your voice box or forward them to your home. Dive into Nightline 24 hours a day. In the hands of three different insurance agents, your home, auto, and life policies could end up full of holes. But call a farmer's insurance agent for a farmer's friendly review. And one agent will bring all your policies together, get rid of gaps, and help trim costs. So if you're with more than one company, cut it out. America can depend on farmers for home, auto, and life. Well, you can see the Civil War, Oregon, and Oregon State. And this one will be one that will go down in history as the Ducks and the Beavers go at it with the Rose Bowl on the line. And it will be the Ducks heading to the Rose Bowl, but I don't think that'll stop people from watching it again. Washington with an outstanding drive to take a 6-0 lead down to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen. Thanks, bud. Uh, you can see pretty good drive by Washington. Billy Diedrich's not unfamiliar with Washington State. He spent a couple of years here and also spent some time over at Idaho. He knows how to play in the nasty weather. He's the offensive coordinator for the Huskies. They just ran the ball between the tackles, threw in the occasional pass. They really had the Cougar defense on their heels. Washington State will have to make an adjustment. Let's see how they do that. We'll throw it back upstairs to you guys. Tug that cap down just a little tighter, Paul. The snow is back. Well, a note to add to Diedrichson's career is he spent some time in Edmonton. <laughs> so you know he's seen a few frozen <laughs> fields. Lots of them. He didn't have to worry about those at Idaho playing in the Dome, but he saw a few here in Pullman and in Edmonton, as you said. Nice drive by the Huskies. Ate up a good chunk of time. Napoleon Kaufman did most of the work, but Leon Neal got the chance to cash it in. Better kick this time by Wales. It will be Hunter right at the goal line who will bring it out. And he's got a little avenue. Across the 30, lost the ball, but he's going to be called down at the 33. Huskies recovered it, but a moot point. Washington State's offense now has to come back out on the field and, and do something to at least pick up a, a couple first downs and, and try to change the field position. Torrey Hunter with a nice return, good blocking up there also to get him out to about the 33-yard line to start this drive. Bryant Thomas in as a wide receiver on this possession for Washington State. Cougars go with the double tight end alignment. Derek Sparks in the backfield as the wind picks up in Pullman. Sparks will try the left side, and there's not much there. David Ritchie in on the initial stop for the Huskies. WSU, you'll see something a little different, and that is the two tight end offense with using David Knuff as a H-back, similar to the old Washington Redskins offense. And they want to use him to uh, perhaps be an additional blocker in the middle of this field and, and try to create something between the two tackles because it's going to be tough to get anything outside of this quick, very fast defensive unit for the Huskies. Senior Paul Reed playing in the right guard position. He's missed the last few games with a broken hand. Big hole. Kevin Hicks, first down for Washington State. Lamar Lyons on the stop. Lyons and Mr. Hicks greeting each other. A couple of Los Angeles guys enjoying a nice afternoon on the Palouse. Nice bit of trap work here in the middle. You'll see the two guards from the right side. Big Clay Reese and Paul Reed, the senior, who wasn't expected to play, but Clay Reese gets a nice kick out on Aliaga, the middle linebacker, and that's something we haven't seen, a Cougar running back with a little lane to run in. Nice bit of blocking by Big Clay Reese, the senior, playing his last game in Martin Stadium. The empty backfield, here comes the blitz. Davis will go down. Initially had time to throw the ball, but the Huskies did a nice job coverage-wise. Nobody was open downfield, and you know, as a quarterback, you're sitting back in that pocket, and you know your 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 clock is going 1001, 1002, and, and you saw Chad Davis right there figure out finally that he had to go somewhere, nowhere to go. One of the additional problems, uh, again talking about the snow and and the direction of the wind, is when you're looking into this snow, it's hard to just to see, much less find an open receiver. 
Lost a three on the sack. It's second and 13 for Washington State. Sparks in the backfield. Short drop by Davis. Wanted to throw it up the sidelines, and we got a pass interference. Bryant Thomas, the intended receiver, he was covered by Reggie Reeser. And there was a little illegal contact while the ball was in the air, and the penalty will go against the Huskies and give Washington State a first down. A number of signs out in the stands here at the Apple Cup. Prime Sports Northwest Holding sponsoring a sign the contest. The foul and the winner against will an receive receiver. four tickets to a Sonic automatic game. First down. And also some spending money for the trip down to Tacoma to see the game. Reggie Reeser not really happy with that call because he thought he made the chuck at the line of scrimmage, but even though he did get the jam, the ball was in the air when he was making contact in the official. Sonny, I thought, made a great call. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chad Davis got rid of the ball extremely quick, and uh, Reggie didn't realize that uh, the ball was in the air, and they're going against the best cover guy of the Huskies right now. Number four, Reggie Reeser's had a great year. First down at the Husky 46 for Washington State. A little counter to Sparks. Something Washington State really did not have in the playbook against Oregon State last week. The Cougars couldn't get anything done on the ground against the Beavers, and the counter defensed pretty well by the Dogs that time. Arizona State a year ago had some great success running the counter against the Husky defense. And I can see Coach Price has picked up a few of those plays, throwing them in the playbook, and uh, testing those Huskies to see if they can defend it. Well, the game plan has got to be, when you're preparing for this snow-type condition is you got to think okay how many plays can I design to run between the two tackles because that's where it's all going to happen once the snow starts to cover up the field. Hicks back in the backfield for Washington State as Knuff goes in motion. Play fake to Hicks. Davis wants to throw it to Knuff and David makes the catch and has a first down still in bounds and boy what a collision with Knuff and Lamar Lyons. And I think round one might have gone to Knuff <laughs> but Lyons recuperated in a hurry. <laughs> That's some cold, hard plastic coming together oh, here boy, at the I end of this you. run. <laughs> Little uh, job of the play action. You'll see Paul Reed again, the right guard. He's going to pull out and provide just enough protection for Chad to lob it over the top to the tight end in motion. And watch this collision. Bada bing! Lamar jumped up pretty quick, though, after that. <laughs> the ground was cold. <laughs> First and 10 Cougars at the Husky 26. Same formation, the other side. The pass caught by Bryant Thomas. He's run out of bounds by Russell Hairston. What's interesting, you talked about Reggie Reeser a while ago. Reeser with four interceptions. One, he's returned for a touchdown. Last year's game in Seattle was the first time in six years that there wasn't a pass intercepted and returned for a touchdown on the Apple Cup. That's the kind of the pass route that is successful in bad conditions. Just run out, run the eight-yard hitch, you saw uh, Russell fall down, basically, and, and that was almost turned into a big game. Now second and about three or four for the Cougars. Sparks in the backfield as they are alternating. He and Hicks, and Sparks has the first down. Loses the football. Let's see who got it. Washington State has it back at the 11-yard line. Huskies lead it 6-0. The Cougars are on the move in their second possession. The first bounce, I guess you'd have to say, goes the Cougars' way as Sparks found a little room. Again, the counter trade delay action just gets right through the arms of Kilpatrick. And there's Steve Hoffman, but Richie Chambers strips that ball loose. Looks like big Ron Lewis is able to scrape it up along with, uh, I think, the tight end. Eric Moore fell on that ball. Richie Chambers has caused three fumbles coming into the ball game, and there, were, there was another example right there. He's got quick hands. First and 10 from the 11, it's Hicks in the backfield. It's a late handoff to Kevin. Inside to about the seven yard line. Washington State getting the surge with the offensive line that we saw the Huskies have on their possession. I was just gonna say that uh, big Scott Sanderson there, number 72, coming off his right tackle position, made a nice block on Ink Aliaga. Ink Aliaga is about 220 pounds maybe at the end of the season. That's right. And uh, the, the Cougars definitely have the size advantage over a relatively light defensive line and linebacking crew for the Huskies. I think the Cougars are doing an outstanding job of mixing it up. They're doing play action, little quick hitch passes like we saw earlier, and nice running with those traps up the middle. They're really, are really, Mike Price has done a good job here. Cougars have elected to use their first time out. 5.04 left to play in the first quarter. The Huskies lead the Cougars 6 to nothing. Washington State knocking on the door. You're watching the Apple Cup 
on Prime Sports Northwest. Introducing Sunmaker's Express Service to Hawaii. Now you can fly round trip to Honolulu, stay four days and three nights, and pay just $350. 350 bucks! <laughs> so while the romance of Hawaii is always called to you, now it's calling a little louder! Sunmaker's Hawaii. Holiday gift certificates are now available. Call your travel agent for details. So I did some checking and I found out $2.99 is really the same thing as $3, except it's a penny less. So some burger joint's got a meal, cost $2.99. Big whoop. Who cares if it's only $2.99 if I'm not gonna like eating it? But if you make it taste good, you know, like a whopper. Flame broiled, not fried. Maybe throw in some fries and a drink. I'll gladly pay you $2.99. <laughs> hey, I'd even go as high as $3.02. Burger King, get your burgers worth. The new Jimmy has all the strength of a GMC truck. Including 50 advances in sound isolation. So it's easy to keep the outside world outside. See the all-new Jimmy at your Puget Sound GMC truck dealer today. Bud Namick, Cleet Casper, Sonny Sexkiller, Paul Sorensen, and the entire Prime Sports Northwest crew, and actually the, the Prime Network crew here as well. There's the most valuable player right there, the, uh, the heating unit on the sideline. But the interesting thing, it's on the Cougar bench. Cougars usually don't have heaters on their sideline. The Huskies said, no, we're not going to acknowledge the weather. No heaters on the Husky sideline. Or maybe it's because the Cougars rented the, the couple of heaters that were available. Sparks left side. Spins down to about the two-yard line. The Cougars can get a first down. It would be just inside the one as Derek takes a bow. <laughs> Again, good bit of blocking on the left side this time. Sanderson and uh, his compatriot Lewis, the, the left guard, do a good job of, of setting up the play. And Sparks running like you know he can. Got a good five, six yards on that second down carry. Brings up third and one for the first down couple yards to go for the touchdown. It is Hicks in the backfield. Cougars go three wide receivers right. The Huskies only have two defenders out that way. But now Washington State shifts, and they've got Hicks and Sparks in the backfield. It is Hicks with Sparks blocking. Did he get in? The Cougars say yes. No sign from the officials yet. It is a first down. Not a touchdown, but a good play. Just picking up that yard and a half for the first down is good enough to keep the drive alive so I think you've got a chance here for three straight quarterback sneaks to get into that end zone. Mike Price's reaction he thought it was six points but well, he'll have to wait at least one more play. Again a good surge in there but he uh, just got stopped just short Kilpatrick Aliaga in on the tackle down there. Cougars need to score the six though. Jeff Thomas is the third tight end to the right of your screen. Sparks and I don't think he got there. I don't think he got there either, bud. Ink Aliaga and a number of white-shirted Huskies on the left side of the line did a nice job. And Ink is a happy guy. As happy as a guy from Honolulu can be in 20-degree temperatures in Pullman. He's got to realize second down is coming up, and it's still short yardage. Good penetration underneath. You see Lawyer Malloy went over the top of the pile and got underneath Sparks' legs. Uh, I think down here, the quarterback sneak is the best play because you don't give Lawyer Malloy enough time to come over the top. Just go ahead and follow your big center, McCloskey, in for six. Second and goal. Sparks hurdles. Touchdown, Washington State. is really bottled up and collapsed down by the tight end Eric Moore and really just caved in that left side and a nice bit of running that time Sparks got in go ahead 7-6 the important extra point added by Tony Truant 3-30 left to play in the first quarter 
of Apple Cup 94. It's the Cougars 7, the Huskies 6. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. Ever since they shared the national championship in 91, they were destined to meet on the battleground. And on September 24th, 1994, it happened. The Miami Hurricanes defending an NCAA record 58 home game winning streak. And the Washington Huskies, 14-point underdogs with a bone to pick, took the field in the Orange Bowl. What happened next has come to be known as the Whammy in Miami. And now you can own a special Whammy in Miami videotape hosted by two members of that national championship Husky team, James Clifford and Dave Hoffman. You'll get all the highlights that made the Whammy in Miami one of the Huskies' great all-time victories. Plus, you'll get interviews and insights from the coaches and players who put it all together. Get your piece of Husky history for only $19.95 plus $3.50 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-433-DOG with your Visa or MasterCard order or mail your check or money order to this address. That's 1-800-433-DOG for Visa and MasterCard orders or mail your check or money order to this address. The Whammy in Miami is waiting for you. And God said, let there be an incredible rock and roll event. The devil said, I give you the Rolling Stones on pay-per-view. Budweiser and VH1, in association with Visa and Blockbuster Entertainment, present Who Do You Voodoo? The Rolling Stones Live on pay-per-view. See the Stones with surprise guest stars and playing a segment unplugged. Who Do You Voodoo? The Rolling Stones Live on pay-per-view, Friday, November 25th. Pay-per-view brings you rock and roll satisfaction at home. Viacom Cable is monkeying around with a couple of sci-fi classics. Set a date with the gorilla your dreams in the original Planet of the Apes and the chimp off the old block beneath the Planet of the Apes, a double feature festival on USA. And Connery, Moore, and Dalton, it doesn't matter who you bond with because they're all on TBS in James Bond's greatest movies. The best fest in November are on Viacom Cable. I am what you're looking for. Seven six Cougars lead the Huskies. Washington scoring drive, 12 plays, 67 yards in five minutes and 12 seconds. The Cougars scoring drive, 12 plays, 67 yards, five minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> Took a little longer. Let's quickly go down to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen. Thanks, Bud. Great day in the neighborhood. Great drive for Washington State that time. John McDonough, the deep offensive coordinator for the Cougars, tore a page right out. Ran between the tackles, a little play action pass in there. The key pass to David Knopf really set the stage for the Cougars. They took the ball right down the field and score. Keep it between the tackles, throw in the occasional pass. That's going to be the scheme. Now can the Cougar defense turn around and stop the Huskies? We'll get a chance to find out. Back upstairs. Paul Sorensen, a multi-talented man, bringing us that information from the sideline and being a ventriloquist and doing his Mike Price impersonation at the same time. And there's the real Mike Price. I want to remind you that uh, this game is also being broadcast by our friends Phil Stone, Rodney Gilmore, and Paul Sunderland of the Prime Network. And occasionally you're going to see a little something of theirs that you won't hear about. Bill Doba and Mike Price chuckling about something on the sidelines. Maybe, think, maybe, about, it was, maybe it was about Sorensen's impersonation. I got a feeling that Dova's just going over to thank Mike, Mike <laughs> for scoring a touchdown. That was, this was the first time in a long time that Coach Dova's seen six points uh, capped off with an extra point. Kind of nice. Tony Truant to kick it away, a squibber that is mishandled by the Huskies at the 25. But they're going to end up with great field position. And maybe not so great field position as a flag is thrown inside of the 40. As that ball was returned by Jerry Jensen, backup linebacker, who was seeing a picture of one of his dreams getting to return a kick. Well, unfortunately for the Huskies, uh, or fortunately if you're Coog, which I am, uh, Rashawn Sheehy got a little bit of a clip going there, and that'll take it back. Spotted at about the 25-yard uh, line here for the Huskies instead of a pretty nice return. Would have been out at the 49, so a very costly penalty. Sonny? Well, he called it more of a holding, and I, I thought it was a decent block. I thought it was fair. I think he just kind of, when he was falling down, both of them, he, he had a, a hold of his leg. What's a quarterback know about blocks? I did a lot of them. <laughs> There's Napoleon's toe, the one that's got the little bit of turf toe to it, but it hasn't nagged him so far. No, it hasn't. He has run well. Damon Heward at quarterback, first and 10 for the Huskies. First look at the fullback. And Richard Thomas able to get a pretty good gain out to about the 35-yard line. 
Richard Thomas, a 5'9", 220-pound junior out of Kentwood High School. Carry number 65 of the year for him. Well, he's the guy that the Huskies uh, should be, of the Huskies, that should be effective in this type of climate where most of his running is done straight ahead from a short distance and just a power runner all the way and did a nice bit. As you see, one crazy maniac up in the stands. Oh, geez. Hypothermia won him nothing. And it's Thomas again. And quite a surge turns into a rugby scrum. Uh, the scrum for a first down, bud. Mark Fields and Richard Thomas saying hello. Richard's had some very outstanding runs this year from the fullback position. You'll see why here. He is very strong. He's built low to the ground, like Cleet was saying. His calves on him, Cleet, I mean, they're, they're as big as our thighs. I mean, he is just put together. Be between his calves and Casey's calves, you've got enough to feed a family for a year. Big meat on him. Yeah, they are very strong. First down for the Huskies from the 39. There you see a look at the defensive numbers and rushing. Cougars led the nation most, much of the year. Mark Bruner, his first catch. And the big senior out of Aberdeen gets close to the midfield stripe. Well, that's the kind of pass that'll work well as Bruner comes out. He's faking the block and then delays out late. And Heward really set that up well, looking downfield, not drawing attention to Bruner. He's been our big guy on third downs this season, Cleet. He's really come in. He's, he stretches his body out. He averages 10 yards per catch. And he's always around that first down marker. Damon Heward, two out of three for 19 yards. Mark Bruner on his way to his second consecutive all Pac-10 season. Cleland goes in motion. Thomas gets the first down into Cougar territory at about the 46-yard line. And right now, both offenses really using the field conditions to their advantage. And I think what may become a huge factor in this football game will be which offense makes the mistake of putting the ball on the ground. The Cougars did once and got away with it. Really not too much snow on the ground, a light drifting snow. It's cold enough that it's a dry type of feel, and uh, the ball hasn't gotten heavy or slippery yet. Fifth play of this drive coming up for Damon Heward and the Huskies on first down. Kaufman, nice little stutter step. As there was nothing there initially, he stepped it to the outside and picked up a couple of yards. I don't know how he didn't fall down. <laughs> Great balance on that run. Didn't gain a lot of yardage, but you can you can still see his quickness out there. And one thing that you know we're talking about running between the tackles. Napoleon this season sometimes will give up on that hole a little quick and jump outside. And uh, we like to see him run up the middle, run between the tackles. Sonny, there was question last year at the end of the year about how high Napoleon Kaufman would go in the draft. Maybe that was one of the reasons why he came back for his senior year. What's the talk around Seattle this year? Is he high? more highly regarded by pro scouts now? Well, it depends on who's going to draft him. I mean, he's a Glenn Milburton type of player. He can, re he has a knack. People say that he's not a great receiver, but he has caught quite a few balls this season. And uh, obviously, for his potential on special teams, I would take a chance and draft him high. Thomas the carry inside the 40. That could very well be the final play of the first quarter. It has been an eventful one. The Huskies scored first, but missed the extra point. The Cougars scored tacked on the extra point and many of the faithful staying here in Martin Stadium this is a big third down for the Huskies uh, as time will run out in the first quarter and they won't get this playoff what a profit you are we've played 15 minutes of football the Cougars lead the Huskies by one you're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest The Washington State Cougars control the ball Saturday nights on Prime Sports Northwest. Hi, I'm Steve Largent. Watch the Seahawks close up on Prime Sports Northwest. Okay, listen up. Most of you grew up with just three networks. Now you're cruising the cable highway with the up and down button on the remote control, aren't you? Well, I'm here at this prestigious university to get you up to date. You ready for some new math? These are the number of college football games shown on all these networks last year. 
And this is the number of college football games shown on Prime Sports Northwest. Now, where are you going to park that remote this season? Hold that thought. You're watching the Washington State Cougars play Pac-10 football on Prime Sports Northwest. Third down and four facing the Huskies. They are three of three in third down conversions so far, and that's much better than they've been doing in recent weeks. The Huskies were one of the top third down conversion teams in the Pac-10 early on before stumbling of late. The Cougars, the best in the Pac-10, defensing third downs. Cougars show blitz, offsides Washington State, first down via the penalty. They tried the timing and it didn't work. Leon Bender is in on the defensive line for Washington State. Where's number 55? Encroachment on the defense. There was contact made. The five yards results in a first down. Called a penalty on the officials. I think he gave the wrong signal yeah, for did. that penalty. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> My hands are cold and I'm getting yeah. circulation. Yeah. <laughs> Offside on the cook. Yeah, speed it up, speed it up. <laughs> Bill Richardson, five yards for illegal use of his hands. <laughs> First and 10, though, for the Huskies at the 34 of Washington State. Thomas up the middle and Ron Childs trying to wrap him up, but Thomas with the surge, a pickup of about four on that play. Eighth first down for the Huskies, and they are over the century mark in yards. Ronnie Childs, the senior out of Kamayakan High School. One of the semi-finalists for the Butkus Award, not one of the three finalists. But he and Mark Fields and Chris Hayes have teamed up to be quite a linebacking core for the Cougars this year. Second and seven. Napoleon Kaufman up the middle and able to pick up a couple and then push back. Progress to the 29-yard line. Don Sasa and Patrick Kessie look like twins. <laughs> same hairdo, same size. They're two, two very fine players. The graphic there that uh, really exemplifies how much experience there is on this Cougar defense. Ronnie Childs with 35 starts. Uh, John Rushing with 45. Uh, that's more than you know some whole defenses have in a career. They've got a big play here. Try to avoid the penalty, and the Huskies will call timeout to set this up because they know that going into this win and continuing this drive is important. I think the Huskies had some personnel problems. They did not have enough or the right personnel out on the field to get things underway. They will after the timeout. We will return in just a moment. The Cougars leading the Huskies by a point. You're watching Apple Cup 94 on Prime Sports Northwest. Everybody's got more football than these guys, but who's got more college football than all these other guys combined? Prime Sports Northwest. With our full coverage of Washington, Oregon, Oregon State, and the Cougars, and our live Pac-10 Game of the Week, almost every team in the Pac-10 plays every week this season on PSN. Plus, our live ACC, SEC, SWC, and Big Sky coverage, capped with a whack, adds up to more of what you watch college football for. PSN. So much college football this fall, even three TVs couldn't bring you any more. Let's go! Monday Night Football belongs to the Mallards on Prime Sports Northwest. This is Prime Sports Northwest. Seven to six, Cougars leading the Huskies. Bud Namick, Cleet Casper, Sonny Sixkiller, and Paul Sorensen with you from Martin Stadium in Pullman. We pull out all the stops for the Apple Cup. What is this? I can't believe that they had actually video back in these days. Look at, Look this at the moves. <laughs> Look at how skinny he is. And listen to the reaction from the Martin Stadium crowd <laughs> as number six, wearing purple and gold, gets into the end zone. 
How come well, you didn't have a purple helmet by that time? It was late in the season. You should have been wearing that. Uh... Well, you know, my first two years there, that purple helmet was a special award for defensive players only. And going into our senior year, we as captains decided, hey, we're all given 110%. So we everybody had purple helmets my senior year. You know, I was, uh, I was at that game watching you from the stands. I think I was about seven. What are you now? <laughs> <laughs> Third down and five for the Huskies from the Cougar 29. Washington State shows blitz. Let's see if they try to come this time. They were caught offside last time on third down. They don't come. Heward, time, lost the ball. That's a loose football. It looked like it might have been a Husky who got it at the 34. Let's see. Nothing from the official. A lot of arms waving. Go Damon Heward just simply lost the handle on that football as he set up to throw it. Cougars say they have it, and the officials agree. The Huskies still well, insisting the they have, have the ball. Actually, the officials have not called it. I thought I saw one official point Cougar direction, and there it is. Damon Heward taking a page out of Dave Craig's book there. As uh, the cold weather got to him, he's trying to release the ball on the post route up top. And you'll see this ball just flops right out of his hand. That's uh, something that a lot of Seattle fans are used to seeing. He expects that ball is going to be recovered by Gallagher, who takes a shot from Childs. And it's a mad scramble, and that's where we talk about desire. Who wants this football? You've got to just fall on it, though, Cleet. You don't try and pick it up. That's, uh, that's a big mistake by our offensive lineman. Washington State. Unable to take advantage of the turnover, at least as they tried to snap the ball the first time. Still 11 seconds on the play clock, but a flag thrown by the officials. I wonder how many Good times ball. that ball changed Full hands. Start on the tight end. He was you never know on the those piles what's going to happen. But, you know, in, this, in these kind of conditions, Damon Heward reminded me, it looks like Dave Craig of the Seahawks. But, uh, you know, you just have to hang on to it with both hands. As you know, Cleet being a quarterback, you just you can't do what you normally do. You have to adjust, and the Huskies really don't have much of an excuse for not being used to cold conditions because it's been in the 20s over in Seattle over the last week and uh, he's been used to this type of playing condition so just a, a more of a mental error than a physical saw a glimpse of the Cougar defense on the sidelines Davis the throw on first and 15 has the catch running room foot race down the sideline Albert Kennedy down at the 20 Washington State loves to go for the big play following a turnover, the sudden change, but this was just the out to pick up a couple of yards and a broken tackle by Kennedy. And off he goes down the sideline, but good closing speed by Lawyer Malloy. Lawyer Malloy actually was screened off by Inkaliaga. You'll see a nice block here by Eric Moore as he peels back and picks off David Kilpatrick. Good play calling there by Mike Price on the sideline. Davis now with 79 yards through the air after that 52-yard gain. Wide open. David Knopf to the three-yard line. Washington State on the move. They lead by one, and they have a chance to add some more. Two times now, Lawyer Malloy's come up to save a touchdown, and he's been doing that the whole season. Very good play by the Cougars. They were going the other way in the first quarter. They're a little tight end out on a little delay. Good patience by Chad Davis. He sees that Schmidt's coming upfield. He waits for his guard and delivers the ball perfectly right in the breadbasket so David can get upfield. I think the Cougars have found an offensive formation that has some future. David Knuff, a couple of catches for 36 yards. He now has six catches this year, as you saw Mike Price on the Cougar sideline. We've got another stoppage of play as I believe Washington State has called a timeout and Mike Price as you can see not pleased about that but says okay damage control come on over here and see what we can figure out we'll take a break 7-6 Cougars with 12 37 left in the second quarter you're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest in a 
distant corner of our galaxy, an invincible alliance has been formed. Engage! Let's go! Jack in the Box and the new Paramount Motion Picture Star Trek Generations team up to give you a free Star Trek Generations movie collector's cup when you galaxy size any supreme value combo. For just 39 cents more, beam up to bigger fries, a larger drink. Collect all four limited edition cups. It's a stellar deal for just 39 cents more only at Jack in the Box. If your home, auto, and life insurance is in the hands of three different agents, your coverage could be a bit unstable. But call a farmer's insurance agent for a farmer's friendly review, and one agent can bring all your policies together, get rid of gaps, and keep costs down. And saving money will seem like a piece of, well, you know. America can depend on farmers for home, auto, and life. Many airlines offer reduced rate fares. Unfortunately, that's not all they've reduced. It makes you wonder, what's next? I'd appreciate it. Do you have four quarters for a dollar? Anybody have two quarters for a dollar? Yes, miss, do you have two quarters for two dollars? Two quarters for five dollars, please? Oh, boy, I'd appreciate it. On Alaska Airlines, we have low fares, too, but you'd never know it by the way we treat you. Washington State with a one-point lead and the football on the three of the Huskies. It's first and goal, Cougars from the three. And look at this, Cleet Casper wearing number nine, a touchdown pass in the Apple Cup, 1982. And listen to I, this. I, I'm speechless, I really am. Uh, I couldn't ask for anything, any better way to, to go out of here. And a win over the Huskies has always been a big goal, and I don't think I could have fulfilled my career without winning once. And I'm just very proud to be a Cougar today. I was so much younger then. <laughs> oh. I almost brought a tear to my yeah. eye. <laughs> <laughs> it brought a tear to most Husky fans' eyes, Sonny. Oh, my God. That was when most of them had uh, already got their tickets for the Rose Bowl and were, were going to be spending it somewhere else. That was a fun, fun day for Cougars and myself. Here now, the Cougars got to get it in gear, make sure that they take care of the football. There's been a couple fumbles down here on the ground, and they've been lucky to, con uh, to get them back. Unique formation. Now that full house backfield again. Three tight ends, Hicks and Sparks in the backfield on first and goal from three. This is Hicks. Touchdown, Washington State. Guess what? Cougars just went 67 yards again. That's the magic number. You want to get the ball on your own 33 to score in this game. Nice bit of blocking again on that left side. The three tight end formation or heavy jumbo. Big Ron Lewis gets a nice kick out block. Lawyer Malloy loses his footing, is not able to deliver the blow. Truett kicks the extra point. Cougars go up 14-6, 12-34 left in this second quarter. And you're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. Ever since they shared the national championship in 91, they were destined to meet on the battleground. And on September 24th, 1994, it happened. The Miami Hurricanes defending an NCAA record 58 home game winning streak. And the Washington Huskies, 14-point underdogs with a bone to pick, took the field in the Orange Bowl. What happened next has come to be known as the Whammy in Miami. And now you can own a special Whammy in Miami videotape hosted by two members of that national championship Husky team, James Clifford and Dave Hoffman. You'll get all the highlights that made the Whammy in Miami one of the Huskies' great all-time victories. Plus, you'll get interviews and insights from the coaches and players who put it all together. Get your piece of Husky history for only $19.95 plus $3.50 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-433-DOG with your Visa or MasterCard order or mail your check or money order to this address. That's 1-800-433-DOG for Visa and MasterCard orders or mail your check or money order to this address. The Whammy in Miami is waiting for you. Now you can own a special three-part NASCAR racing video set featuring the most exciting NASCAR races, drivers, and behind-the-scenes action, all for only $19.95. Part one is NASCAR's greatest races. See Richard Petty, Cale Yarbrough, Daryl Waltrip, and others in rare video footage of the most dramatic head-to-head, no-holds-barred racing battles. 
part two is racing's toughest tracks and turns. He'll go speeding into the tortuous high banks of Bristol and the legendary fourth turn at Darlington, plus all the hottest race tracks. Part three is NASCAR's legends, the big names that shape the sport, like Junior Johnson, Bobby Allison, Bill France Sr., Fireball Roberts, and more. All superstars that made NASCAR racing what it is today. All three NASCAR programs on one VHS video, plus a free set of NASCAR decals, all for only $19.95. Call 1-800-451-3900 with your credit card ready, or send check or money order to NASCAR Video, P.O. Box 2727, Department 1, Costa Mesa, California, 92628. Kevin Hicks with a three-yard touchdown run, and Washington State has taken a 14-6 lead. Again, the Cougars going 67 yards. This time, it took just three plays and 55 seconds. Jim Lambright has to be concerned. This Washington State offense has been dormant, and today they have moved the football. Those jumper cables that Clay Reese brought to the Cougar offense have worked. Well, Reggie Reeser, though, you know, he's got to come up, settle himself down, and make those kind of tackles. Kennedy being a big back at 6'3", 200 pounds, just broke away from his hand tackles. Let's go down to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen. Thanks a lot, bud. Great drive. Excuse me, big guy. You got to move out of the way. Great drive for Washington State that time. Did a nice job of play action again. David Knuth's going in motion. They're using him to option either to catch the ball or do a little blocking out of the backfield. Also watch for an isolation. They want to get one-on-one -on -one with Russell Harrison, number 26 for the Huskies. Let's see if that pans out next time the Cougars get the ball. Nice drive for Washington State. We've got a heck of a football game. Back upstairs. <laughs> that was the best defense Paul Sorensen ever played right there. Well, we, we saw Sonny in an Apple Cup, Cleet in an Apple Cup, and we saw Paul in an Apple Cup of his own. Leon Neal has a little bit of room and then gets dragged down. It almost looked like a face mask type of dragging down, but I think the Cougar tackler had a bit of a shoulder pad or perhaps even the towel. Brian Walker with the touchdown saber there had a lane, and Leon Neal has got some speed. Here's where Washington State's defense needs to come up with, again, a good first series here. Let's not let the Huskies get Napoleon back on track. Let's get the jaws flapping in the crowd going. WSU needs to take advantage of the momentum that's been created by the offense. Huskies with 105 yards of offense, 87 of those on the ground. And they'll keep it on the ground on first down. Kaufman, a little running room, and cuts it back, breaks a tackle and ends up getting out to the 39, an eight yard first down game. He is fun to watch. He is a very fun player to watch. Uh, the Huskies, Cleet, need to come out and just, they, they need to establish themselves again. They've been successful running the football. They also are capable of coming up with a big play. I've seen it other games this season where they'll come out when they get down, come up with a big play for a touchdown. Napoleon with 56 yards this afternoon. Earlier went over the 4,000 yard mark for his career. Second and two for the Huskies. Cleland in motion. Thomas, the fullback. And with the surge, gets a first down for Washington, their ninth of the afternoon. Huskies taking a page there out of the, uh, the three tight end alignment, using Cleland to actually act as a pulling guard and make the kick out block on the tackle just enough for Thomas to squeeze in for the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 43 now of Washington. Four-yard gain for Thomas and a first down. Coach Dova and his crew up here in the booth have to make a decision whether or not they're going to continue to try to penetrate between the guard and center gap or whether they're going to get outside. Damon had problems with the snap. This is a broken play and a flag thrown in very late. It was thrown at the feet of Andrew Peterson and you would expect perhaps a hold, but we'll let the officials sort it out. Yeah, Damon didn't have control of the ball coming away from center right there, almost lost it. Looked to be an option play set up, just had to get what he could. Back behind there, not even close to the play. Those have got to drive you nuts, Cleet. Well, a lot of times when you do have a broken play, the offensive linemen are trying to get penetration, uh, and make down. a block on a certain side, and when things break down, all of a sudden, they feel uncomfortable and start grabbing, and I think that's what got called there. Fourth penalty for 35 yards in the afternoon for the Huskies. Chad Eaton, senior out of Rogers High School in Puyallup. The most quotable Cougar oh. ever. <laughs> got after the Cougar offense a bit this week, and it's worked so far. Hey, sometimes that's what it takes, is your own guys 
demanding that you play a great game on their final senior Husky Cougar game. The draw to Kaufman. Bumble. Ball's loose. Washington has recovered it. They end up netting a couple of yards on the loose ball. If there's a knock against Napoleon, that's got to be it. That the pro scouts are going to see the ball on the ground quite a lot when they review the, the game tape. And here he just gets stripped from behind. Ball pops out there, and it looked like Conwell was able to, to fall down on there. There again, you see the ball being punched out, literally. You see Mark Fields got it on one side and then the other. Yeah, it looked like he punched all the way through the abdomen area and knocked it out. Second and 18 now for the Huskies from the 35. Cougars show blitz. They don't come with it. Heward for Bjornsson made the catch and goes sliding on the sideline. That was very close to a bit of a late hit by Washington State. Bjornsson bounced back up, as did Damon Heward after he was hit. Nice bit of running around here as he gets the inside release and almost does a, a basketball move uh, trying to pirouette and get to the, the corner route. Torrey Hunter. That's a close to being a flag. Yeah. yeah. He, was, he had, the, close. had the hands, and there you see Chad Eaton putting the big pop to Heward again, even though it's a complete pass. Damon's going to be thinking, where's number 90 next time his eyes are searching that front line? Another big third down play now. Heward three out of four for 32 yards. It's third and a long four for the Huskies. Cougars show blitz. They were almost off sides. Nothing doing. The blitz worked. Singor Mobley. Ronnie Childs in on the hit in the backfield. That had no, <laughs> no way of being successful. It's too slow, number one, on a, on a draw like that, Cleet, and you've got a blitzing defense coming. He's lucky to even get the ball off on the handoff. Coach Doba just guessed right. You see Fields absolutely destroying things as far as Richard Thomas' lead block. Ron Child, his compatriot, comes up and really mops up, so big play, and that forces a punt into the wind here. Let's see if WSU gets decent field position out of this turnover. And Jeff Prince, who has been struggling, has been on the sidelines in the cold. He's probably one of those guys who wishes there was a heater on the sideline. Averaging just over 37 yards a kick, and this one will knuckle around and head towards the sideline and go out at about the 21-yard line. 9.26 left in the first half. The Cougars have a 14-6 lead and now have the football again. Time for the Husky defense to step it up a little bit and be a little aggressive on their, on their half. They're giving Chad Davis a little bit too much time to get rid of the football. Well, a lot of talk this week on the talk radio shows was which defense is going to be most affected by the bad conditions. And I think that the Huskies, more than the Cougars, rely on quick penetrating interior line play. And so far, the two tight end linemen has negated a lot of guys like Hoffman and Richie getting penetration. First down running play, Derek Sparks, not much there. Win that battle, does the Husky defense. Helmet to helmet, pretty good hitting going on out there. David Kilpatrick has come up with a lot of big hits this season. He's a senior cleat, and I'm sure that he wants to go out a winner himself. He's got a lot of guts uh, having to wear that midriff shirt there. <laughs> I mean, there's denial, folks. Yeah. Absolutely mind over body. And yeah, we've got layers and a heater and everything else. <laughs> the counter to Sparks. And he was able to get out to about the 24-yard line. Just about dropped in the backfield, but he was able to break an arm tackle by Lewis Jones. Looked like Lewis might have got a little bit of face mask the way that he made the tackle and jumped away real quick. Yeah, and, and pulled he, those arms back real quick. He had plastic of some kind, and he knew it, but the officials uh, didn't throw it. So good, good heads-up play from him not to finish the tackle and uh, yank the head around. So third down and about eight for the Cougars, third and seven. Cougs one of two on third down attempts so far. We saw Dwayne Patterson on the sideline doing whatever he could to keep warm while the defense was resting. Davis pump fake going up the sideline as a man open. Caught. Bryant Thomas out of bounds inside the 30. And the Cougar passing game that has not produced any big plays the last couple of weeks certainly has today. Well, brilliant execution by Chad Davis and Bryant Thomas again faking the eight-yard hits that was successful with Kennedy. He'll come out, plant, turn his head around is the key. That's the key. Reggie Reeser bites on it, and a perfectly thrown football. Lamar Lyons with a game-saver. Reggie Reeser in the scouting report 
is a very good corner, but he has a tendency to be a little bit too aggressive trying to make something happen, Sonny. Well, on the, on the previous drive, he got burned by not making a good tackle, so he wasn't going to let the cushion get too far apart so he couldn't make the play. That time he got burned on it. 49-yard gain, first and 10 for the 28. Davis, time, throws the out, threw it away. Threw it over the head of Chad Carpenter. Carpenter was double teamed, not open. Davis elected to get rid of the football. Well, that was a good decision. Mike Price was over on the sidelines, and you'd see him clapping his hands saying, yes, yes, it wasn't there. Don't turn the ball over when we're in scoring position. I think that uh, that was an audible that Chad Carpenter didn't hear, didn't co get communicated, and uh, just was not a crisply run route. Five of seven is Chad Davis coming off of a disappointing performance against Oregon State. That's the kind of thing that he needs is to have a first half like this. Jim Lambright doesn't need it, though, and doesn't like what he has seen so far. Cougars lead by eight, and they're on the move again. Sparks cuts it back, running room to the 20, where he was ridden down. Again, Lawyer Malloy, and Malloy and Sparks have a little bit of fun. I think Lawyer was trying to help him up, but was dinging him a bit as he did it. Well, the leading tackler for the Husky defense, Lawyer Malloy, you know, I said it earlier, but he has come up with some game-saving, score-saving tackles, and uh, it's been real nice to have him back there making those plays. But on the other side of the fence here, Sparks is a big running back. He had an excellent hole, and he's got decent speed. Interesting, the Cougars up to 190 yards of total offense today. They have opened up the playbook a bit, has Mike Price and his staff. Mike not happy again because of problems with the formation and the personnel. Washington State has to use its final time out of the half with 7-19 left in the first half. Well, Coach Price isn't going to get too upset. You don't want to rattle your quarterback because he may have wasted a timeout because of personnel but again this is an opportunity to put some points in the board whether it's a field goal or a touchdown you've got the wind behind you and you have to play it safe every point you get in this type of environment is just precious because as the night gets colder the wind's <laughs> going to kick up and it'll be even it's, tougher it's going to get colder it's going to get here much, comes the wind colder. and the snow <laughs> lovely night kind of like on cue cleat <laughs> If I were the Huskies, I'd be watching that little tight end delay out into the near flat. That's worked well for the Cougars today. It'd be a good play to run on third and short like this where people are expecting to run and then come back with that little short dump pass. Uh, you'll be able to tell a little bit of what Mike Price is thinking by whether or not he tries to run to the middle of the field or does attempt a pass and is not concerned about three points. I talked to Mike Price last week, and he said he was excited about watching the Sonics and the Jazz next week. Wednesday, 9 o'clock on Prime Sports <laughs> Northwest. Plenty of basketball coming your way on PSN in the very near future. Sonics and a lot of college hoops. Kevin Hicks, very close to the first down, and I would venture that the Cougars will go for it if they're short. The spot appears to be maybe a step shy of the first down. They're a half yard short of the first down, and I believe that they're going to go ahead and, and bring Tony out on the field running out of time here. They're not going to bring the field goal kicker on. They've got 22 seconds left. Chad Davis is going to go for this. Again, fourth down and about half a yard. They do not have a timeout left. They don't have that luxury to try to get the field goal team on. 10 seconds on the play clock. The center's uncovered. Davis saw it, and he gets the first down. Peculiar defensive alignment by the Huskies in that situation. It Just inviting to, that sneak. It appeared to me that Chad Davis started a little early before the snap of the ball. I wonder if we can get a look at that. Here you see, you're going to see him moving, and the center and him, Sonny, I think that's perfect tandem in beautiful poetry. <laughs> his, his feet were uh, going forward. But uh, anyway, that's a good gutsy call, and I... I'm, I'm with you. I think it was because the clock was running down. They couldn't get their kick team on the field. Well, I think in a half-yard situation like that, you, in this situation with the Washington State defense, you go for it anyway. First down, and we have some movement that time. Steve Hoffman saw some movement on what he thought was a uh, illegal shift or something of the like. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. First and 15. I have to make sure we hear the words because you're not quite sure what if it's signal? on offense or defense when you see the ball start today. <laughs> well, that's not what you want down here. Uh, again, getting in scoring position, then backing yourself up to a, a first and 15. 
Those are the little mistakes that interrupt drives and uh, stall you from getting to your desired goal, which is right about there. Each team has been penalized four times as the snow continues to fall on Martin Stadium. First and 15 from the 22 for Washington State. This is the formation they've thrown to David Knuff out of. He'll stay in a block this time. Davis throws it. Is that a catch? They're going to give it a catch. No. Now they're going to wave it off. That was almost an unbelievable catch by Eric Moore. And almost face guarding, I believe, on our Husky player, but uh, no Lamar, flag. The Lamar Lions has seen that play a couple times, and this is a gutty throw. Lamar Lyons' back is to the football. Eric Moore tries to adjust, and is that interference? Pretty good timing, but uh, the ball is on the ground. Almost an outstanding catch. A lot of almost on that play. The counter to Sparks. Nothing doing. It's going to be third and long for Washington State. Well, here's a situation where your receiver on the outside, a Kennedy or a Bryant Thomas has an advantage, and especially with this wind coming from their backs, the ball can be lobbed up there. They have the advantage one-on-one -on -one to the footing and things. It's a tough play for a corner, and I wouldn't be surprised if Mike took a shot throwing the lob up here to the corner, maybe down here to Jay Dumas facing Harrison. Third and 15 from the 22. Here comes the blitz. Davis gets it off on the screen to Hicks. He has one blocker, gets outside, running room, inside the 10, first down, Washington State. And Kevin Hicks ridden out of bounds and takes out the side judge. Well, again, the Cougars win the play calling battle as Washington comes with the full on blitz. You'll see Ingaliaga coming up the middle along with Hoffman and everybody. Kevin Hicks will slip out after just getting a piece of Donovan Schmidt and Kilpatrick there. Nice job by Chad Davis, just getting enough on it to get it there and yet allowing him to make the catch. Lewis Jones with a big hit, knocked him out of bounds, but Cougars pick up a first down. They're threatening now at the five yard line with five minutes and two seconds left in this first half. Cougars have used up some clock on this drive, as you can see. Hicks in the backfield off in motion. Kevin was able to sneak under the attempted tackle by Lewis Jones and pick up a couple. It'll be second and goal from the three. Actually, pretty good pickup. It looks like Lewis Jones was right there and just did the little head duck and got a couple. Well, Lewis is trying to get that Husky defense fired up. He made a big hit to save the touchdown on the near sideline, and on that play, he got a pretty good lick in there, but Cougars were able to gain at least two positive yards. Chad Davis has thrown for 162 yards in this first half. I don't think he'll be throwing it here. Second and goal from the three, the full house backfield. Well, he is going to throw it, but nobody's there. Throws it away, and fortunate that that one wasn't intercepted. He threw it into a lot of white shirts. That was a broken play. One of the tight ends, I believe, forgot to flare left where Davis was looking for him. Well, actually, uh, Eric Moore got jammed. You'll see him at the top of the, of the screen, and he'll try to come across the back of the end zone, but the Huskies have seen that. Good job of scouting. Chris Torme, the defensive coordinator, has these guys pretty well prepared. You have to be for the Apple Cup. Chris Tormey, a Spokane guy, Gonzaga prep. Third and goal from the three. They'll try Hicks, left side. Stood up at the goal line. Football's loose, but it's after the progress was stopped, and now it's decision time, and the Cougars don't have a timeout. They are at the half-yard line. My guess is they're going for it. You know, if you're playing for the national championship, maybe you kick the field goal. But here, this is the Apple Cup, and you got half a yard. And again, we said at the opening, it's desire and pride. It's going to determine whether or not you get in here. Big play, fourth and a half a yard. Look for the quarterback sneak. It was successful for the Cougars last time. They are trying to run into the end zone where all the Husky fans are seated, so it will be noisy. Second effort might have got oh, Sparks in. So. He did. Second effort did it. He was stopped for no gain, but second effort got Derek Sparks the touchdown. And the Cougars were fortunate they weren't flagged for motion. 
Both running backs got a little head start on the snap. You mentioned tough to make the, the play calling down here with the Husky fans in the closed in end of the stadium, but Derek Sparks wanted that touchdown. He came in there, was stopped, absolutely stopped, and you'll see him use his upper body strength as he takes on Russell, or he takes on Lewis Jones, and he says, I'm gonna bend you over and get that touchdown. Little assist from Kevin Hicks from behind. Unbelievable play. Truant, the extra point. So Washington State has jumped out now to a 21-6 lead over the Huskies with 3.26 left to play in the first half. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. Good evening, everybody. We're here to honor John Santos, the youngest executive to escape. I mean, retire from our firm. And at this point, the only thing we can say to you, John, is thanks. Enjoy the islands. You'll be missed. And by the way, who gets your office? John, congratulations. There's to you. Airport, please. I've got a 9 a.m. flight. No problem. Good. What airline? Alaska. Alaska. When Alaska Airlines says a flight will leave at 9 a.m., we do our best to make sure it does. So usually the only time you'll have to wait for a plane is when you miss one. What's the world coming to? Washington State 21, the Huskies 6. The Cougars have broken the mold. They went 79 yards on that last drive instead of 67. The Cougars have three rushing touchdowns this afternoon. Coming into this game, they had a total of four from their running backs coming into this game. Well, the strategy of electing to take the coin toss and defer, I guess, the kicking and, and who would have the wind in the second quarter has paid off. The Huskies scoring once with the win, the Cougars scoring twice with it, once against it. Let's go down to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen. Cougars are probably saying, let it snow. They love it down here. Chad Davis is banged up. He's got the bad knees, got the bad ribs. He's been hampered all week, but you know what? The worst snow that Washington State had was two days ago. He had the best practice of, of uh, the fall camp. He loves this stuff. On the other side, the Cougar defense have not shown a couple of blitzes. The safety in the corner blitz, they brought it out for this football game. They're pulling out all the stuff. 21-6, what can you say? The kick to the four-yard line. Neal hit hard at the 21. And someone else liked Paul Sorensen's hat as much as we did. They gave him a new one. Well, let's see how mature Damon Hewitt has become this season. This is a critical time for that Husky offense. He's got to come out. He's got 320. He's got two timeouts against a very tough Cougar defense. But so far today, we've had success running the football. Look at some of the Cougar offensive linemen on the sidelines. And the scoring drive with Derek Sparks getting his second rushing touchdown of the day. Here were to throw on first down. Screen was very well defensed by Washington State. Donnie Sasa was out there along with Chris Hayes covering the fullback Richard Thomas. Well, Damon went to the wrong side there. I don't know if he has an option, but uh, Napoleon was wide open on the other side. And maybe he's just a decoy hoping to bring a linebacker or two with him. But uh, that play did not develop very well, and, and Damon did not, look, did not look real confident throwing that football. Those are those are the nervous kind of throws uh, this year. We've been burned a couple of times throwing those uh, in the flat. Uh, Richard Thomas is one of our leading receivers of late, so if Cougars were ready for him. Heward to throw again, a little pump fake, and has the tight end Bruder, his second catch of the day. And out to about the 28-yard line. A lot of hitting, a lot of talking going on down there. Bruner says, is that all you got? You guys are bouncing off that big body. He's a great player. He's got a few NFL downs ahead of him. Again, just running the little tight end delay, almost a, a little pump fake to draw some of the defenders to him. Damon Heward, but uh, I think he's mad. Somebody got their hand up inside his face mask. He's a competitor, Cleet. He's a great tight end. I know you threw to a pretty good tight end yourself. He was average. 
Pat Beach is standing behind Cleet, by the way. Heward on the option. And looks like he has a first down for the Huskies. Play worked a little bit better this time. A little problem with the snap last time Heward tried to run the option. Well, from Washington State's standpoint, any time the option is shown, uh, you, you immediately take away the big threat of Napoleon Kaufman and let Heward beat you. If Heward's going to run for 67 yards uh, and beat you, then fine. But take away the guy that you know that can do it. He did the smart thing, picking up enough yardage for the first down. That's all he needed to do was four yards. 2.15 left to play in the half. Heward trying to buy some time, threw that one away. Good coverage on Eric Bjornsson, and Damon just throwing it away to avoid the sack and throwing it into traffic and to stop the clock. By the way, Pat Beach up here with us. He has something that uh, neither of you two got, which was named to the All-Apple Cup team that was put out by the Seattle Post-Intelligencer newspaper this week. And so deserving. The only reason he got it is because he grew up in Pullman. What does is Bud, that what? what does Bud Withers know? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, a few cheap shots, I'm sure. <laughs> if, if you hear a yell, that's me being thrown out of the booth. 209 left to play in the half. Huskies have a couple of timeouts left. Second and ten from their own 33. Heward guns it out, and interference called on Tory Hunter. Good call. I Got thought the, at first they might not throw it because the ball was uncatchable, but Hunter made contact with Bjornsson before the ball did arrive in the area. Well, Eric's a big target. He's 6'5". Again, Torrey Hunter, good, good coverage right there. He's in position to make the play. Just got him with his right hand. Pretty good play. He was right Hunter there. He, he kept off with his right defense. arm, but just got first a little down, bit of body bump the there, and the, uh, the official was right there with a good call. Torrey Hunter's uh, upset and talking and yelling, and that's a good thing because that means he's playing well. You could see on the replay, though, just how tough the footing is out there. You could watch as both Bjornsson and Hunter were trying to make the cut and really having to try to dig in. 2.04 left in the half now. First and 10 for the Huskies at their own 43. Play fake to Kaufman. Heward for Bjornsson, and it is overthrown. Torrey Hunter with the coverage again that time, and a nice job by Hunter. And he's telling Eric that it was good coverage. <laughs> You're going to expect a little of that today, but... Actually, but it, that time was a pretty good throw by Heward. Uh, Bjornsson had created enough room for him to fade to the outside, and... And you were just missed him by a half a heartbeat there throwing against the wind. It creates just that little bit of problem of do I put a little extra on it? And he did out of the reach of uh, his big split in. Well, Washington State has the best pass defense in the Pac-10, and they have not allowed Damon Heward much this time as this play is blown dead. Heward is four out of eight for just 39 yards today so far. Well, the all the motion and potential threatening blitz got uh, I think big Casey to to come out out of his stance and I think the officials are going to mark that one off against the Huskies big Donnie Sasa out of Long Beach said he's been very happy for the opportunity to play college football he has a lot of appreciation for the coaches at Washington State but there is no says he loves Pullman it's legal down remains the same no flag to play is legal so Damon Hewitt is sacked by Donnie Sasa, if I'm correct. <laughs> Boy, that's, they're going to replay the play, I do believe. I wonder if that decal keeps your face any warmer. But Donnie Sasa said he loves Pullman, except he hates driving in the snow. Too many fender benders. And he had a little fender bender with Damon Heward that didn't count then. Heward pressure. Chased from behind by Dwayne Patterson. And Singor Mobley came up. Mobley and Patterson. And Heward picking up about four yards. And most importantly, he stopped the clock. Didn't try to force the ball downfield, which is something that Damon has done on occasion. Good pressure by Patterson trying to get a hand on the back of Heward's jersey. Bruner sets himself up for a little bit, and then Seymour Mobley wraps him up for a pretty good pop. Well, defenders love to get to any quarterback, and when they got an open shot in the open field like that, they're going to take it. Heward actually only netting 38 yards on the ground this year when you subtract the yardage sack-wise, but he has been able to pick up some yards on the ground. Long third down attempt. Pressure, the, down goes Heward. Ronnie Childs from the outside linebacker spot with the sack. A lot of 
pressure coming up in that 4-6 alignment. Ronnie Childs, you see Napoleon split out out of his narrow normal tailback position. He's supposed to block here, but instead he's going to run a quick little flat route, and Ronnie just gets on inside him, and boom! Clock on the move. Napoleon. Well, Napoleon takes a lot of pride in his blocking. It really surprises me that he was not able to make that block. Well, he left his feet and went down, and uh, that'll make it fourth down and bring on Prince to punt it away. And the Huskies trying to use up as much time as they could. They don't want to give Washington State any time to do anything offensively. And Prince's kick will go out of bounds. It will be inside the 30. 57 seconds left for Washington State. And I would guess they will be rather conservative here with a 21 to 6 lead and a chance to protect the football and go in at halftime. Every time we say that, Mike Price calls a flea flicker bomb reverse pass, something along that line. Mike kind of likes to cross defensive coordinators up in this instance in the ball game. And uh, he's also been criticized for doing that. First and 10 for Washington State, and Davis will throw it on first down. He'll throw the little screen, but he threw it behind Kevin Hicks, and that will stop the clock. Mike Price and his offensive coaches have taken a lot of heat over conservative play calling the last couple of weeks, and the Cougar coaches have said yes. They have called conservative plays for this offense, a young offense, and not wanting to take away from the defense that they have, but they said Apple Cup, Things will have to be different, and it has been. Throw everything out the window. Well, I expect they'll get back to the running game here. And you expect correctly. Not much of a gain, but it will keep the clock going unless the Huskies elect to stop it, but so far they have not. So Washington State will need to run one more play in this half, and they will adjourn to the locker room with a nice lead. They lead it 21 to 6 right now. Credit Kevin Hicks with a one-yard gain on that play. So it's third and nine. But Washington State won't have to punt if they don't convert it here. Hicks, a little running room, and gets out to about the 35. Shy of the first down marker, so the clock will continue to run, and the Cougars can't stop it. So that'll be the end of the first half. Apple Cup 94, and a roar from the Martin Stadium crowd as the Cougars leave the field to cheers leading 21 to 6 over the washington huskies you're watching the apple cup on prime sports northwest ever since they shared the national championship in 91 they were destined to meet on the battleground and on september 24th 1994 it happened the miami hurricanes defending an ncaa record 58 home game winning streak and the washington huskies 14 point underdogs with a bone to pick took the field in the orange bowl what happened next has come to be known as the Whammy in Miami. And now you can own a special Whammy in Miami videotape hosted by two members of that national championship Husky team, James Clifford and Dave Hoffman. You'll get all the highlights that made the Whammy in Miami one of the Huskies' great all-time victories. Plus, you'll get interviews and insights from the coaches and players who put it all together. Get your piece of Husky history for only $19.95 plus $3.50 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-433-DOG with your Visa or MasterCard order or mail your check or money order to this address. That's 1-800-433-DOG for Visa and MasterCard orders or mail your check or money order to this address. The Whammy in Miami is waiting for you. It's easy to find a cure for the common cold at Sutter Home and Hearth. The new gas fireplaces and inserts from Vermont Castings will provide you with warmth at the touch of a button. The glow of a Vermont Castings gas fire will transform your hearth into the center of your home. Its efficiency and heating value will help decrease heating expenses and increase your comfort level. Find the answers to your burning questions at Sutter Home and Hearth in Historic Ballard and in Woodenville at the Hollywood Vineyard Center. Hi, I'm Dave from Osborne's Radio, back with you. Let me give you a guided tour of my store. If you're looking for the best in mobile electronics, there's only one choice. Osborne's Radio, Alpine, JL Audio, Pioneer, Soundstream, Motorola, Clifford, Osborne's has it all. The lowest price is guaranteed. Just a line? No way. We're not the biggest, but we are the best. Osborne's Radio, in Linwood, on the corner of Highway 99 and 180, and in Totem Lake, between Fred Meyer and Totem Hill Pontiac. Stop in! 
Washington State leading the Huskies 21 to 6 at halftime of Apple Cup 1994. But gentlemen, as we well know, anything goes in the second half. Could yes. be interesting. It certainly does. You know, in the Miami game earlier in the year, all the writers had written the Huskies off, and they came back with a strong second half. See if they can duplicate that feat today. Clay, one thing Washington State will certainly want to try to do is to continue on being aggressive offensively. Well, the execution has been flawless. Really, uh, Chad Davis went out limping, gimping a little bit after that last play. And so I'm curious to see how he comes out for the second half. We will see that in just a moment. First, take a look at some of the first half highlights. Early on, a, a big game for Napoleon Kaufman. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's re-injured his toe or not, but they certainly haven't been running the ball with him of late in the second quarter particularly they need to get back to that bud and establish that ground game where they had success in the first half leon neal came on to make the touchdown run here and uh we haven't seen much of him either so napoleon one of them needs to step up and uh, to the plate and perform huskies had a six nothing lead at that point the cougars answered with three consecutive touchdowns derek sparks got a pair of them derek sparks running very well this afternoon and has really come with some aggressive running here, Kevin Hicks goes in for his touchdown, which was the second Cougar touchdown, squeaks in on a big play. The Husky defense has been on their heels, and the two, three tight end alignment has hurt them. The cheer you hear for the Cougars, who've just returned to the field. 211 yards of total offense for Washington State. One turnover by the Huskies. Time of possession in favor of the Huskies. Penalties, not really a huge factor for either team. Oh, well, it's really, it's, the passing yards, 162, is really surprising, I'm sure, to both you two standing here, and as well for most of these Cougar fans out in the stands. And Chad Davis has really turned it on. And like you say, if he's not healthy, who are they going to play the second half? Maybe the Huskies can take advantage of that. Well, it's been snowing, so the Cougar passing game has been clicking. Seems to work that way. We have the second half coming up. Apple Cup 94 right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Pac-10 football is a hit on Prime Sports Northwest. Your favorite Pac-10 teams play every game of their whole season on PSN. Root for the Huskies, the Cougars, the Beavers, the Ducks, or all four when they kick off the action at your house. Plus, our live Pac-10 game of the week means you get more Pac-10 on PSN than anywhere else. But why stop there? Our live Big Sky coverage adds even more excitement to your college football weekend. Your teams and our coverage make you the winner with Prime Sports Northwest. Thunder Road gets your motor running. Thursdays on PSN. Engines roar, hum, whine, and blow. Wheels squeal, spin, burn, and bounce. Drivers shake, rattle, and roll. From two wheels to four, it's all you can handle and more. So take the first exit off Main Street to Thunder Road. Thursdays on Prime Sport Northwest. Washington State on top, 21-6, to six, as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. Enjoying his first Apple Cup is Washington State's athletic director, Rick Dixon. He's down on the sidelines Thanks, with Paul Sorensen. We're here with a very cold Rick Dixon, athletic director of Washington State University. Seven months on a job, five years at the University of Tulsa. This is kind of a neat experience, a snow thing. What do you think of this whole deal? I'm just waiting on Santa Claus. They tell me he comes right behind this. Well, you have the magic formula. You come in here and they sell out four of the five games that Washington State has at home. If three of your teams have gone postseason, Washington State's on its way to a bowl game. It's got to be a pretty good uh, situation for a first time here in the Pac-10. It's a great feeling, Paul, and a real credit to the to the kids and the coaches. And uh, you just got to be really pleased. It's an exciting time for us. We're in the middle of a $25 million capital campaign for new facilities and scholarship endowments. So it's a really exciting time for us. And uh, couldn't be happier about the way things are going today. I know you'd like to go second half, still 30 minutes of football left, being an old defensive back, and I mean that old in the, in the key sense. <laughs> what would you do, given Mike Price, or what would you tell the kids coming out here second half? Hopefully Mike Price has got two better DBs than you and I to <laughs> line up back there. But, you know, you don't let up in a situation like this. And these kids won't. They, they needed this type of a start. Uh, they've been feeling down about themselves. But I think, I think things are going to look good in the second half. Rick Dixon, thank you for joining us. Great job here at Washington State University. Back upstairs. And thank you, Paul. Tony Truitt putting it into the end zone. So the Huskies will come out and begin with the football on their own 20. A look at the first half possessions. Off to the quick start with the touchdown, their one turnover, and then a couple of kicks later on. So the only turnover of the first half belonged to Washington. They'll try to take care of the ball. And look who's at quarterback. Ted Stark, the sophomore out of Medford, steps in at quarterback. Well, Ted's got the ability, guys. He's a very talented young man. He's come in before when Damon was been, has been injured and performed 
quite well. Hewitt standing on the sideline with the helmet on. Kaufman tries to get outside, spins away from one tackle. Ron Childs there, pick up of maybe three on the first down play by Napoleon Kaufman, who rushed for 53 yards in the first half. Ted Stark has thrown just one pass this year. It's been incomplete. 6'4", 210 pounds, sophomore out of South Medford High School in Medford, Oregon. Well, an interesting decision. Uh, Heward is not on the bench with the, with the big Husky W on the back. He's dressed, ready to play. It's just an interesting decision that uh, Diedrich and Lambright decide to go with. Second and seven for the Dogs. Stark the throw. Looking for his first completion of the year. And it's incomplete. Brian Walker did a nice job to close on Dave Janowski. And Walker knocked it away. But, guys, that was an excellent throw. That was a good job by the Cougar defense here. But one thing I like about Ted Stark, he steps up in that pocket and he will deliver the ball and the money. A lot of people around Janowski and Walker times his hit perfectly. Knocks that ball away. But like it like you said, Sonny, that ball was thrown pretty well. It's a tough situation for a young kid to come in and, and engineer a come-from-behind victory in a cold weather against the wind. Third down and seven. The Dogs were three of six in first down conversions. Problem with the snap, and they will not convert this third down. Ted Stark just trying to secure the football. It's one of those things, but the exchange between the center, quarterback, they probably haven't been working together very much. Frank Garcia, Ted. Well, but you're right, Clay. That's a tough situation no, to come I, in. I, you know, as a Cougar, I applaud it because that's a real difficult situation to come in and accomplish coming down from 21-6. And uh, Heward's the guy that's been there all year. I don't understand it, quite frankly. Well, we don't know for sure if there's an injury involved in this situation. Uh, rp has been deemed. He is limping around a little bit now that I see him move along. High snap. snap out of the end zone. Safety. Washington State gets two points. They'll have the football in a moment. Frank Garcia let it fly. Caught a flyer out of that ice lie that he had. And unfortunately for him, that's what a lot of Huskies are going to remember him for is Snapping the ball over the top of his head. He had a great career, but this is just no chance for Prince. We've had a situation this year, Cleet, if you've seen any film, where our extra points and field goals, Eric Lawrence has been like a center fielder out there trying to catch the snaps, and it has been a problem throughout the season. And that's one big play that you do not need in the Apple Cup. So Washington State's lead extended now to 23 to 6. The Cougars have scored 23 unanswered points. And things have turned around a bit. We had a snowstorm earlier, and right now the Huskies feeling like they're caught in a bit of an avalanche. Well, it's crystal clear weather out and very cold. And so now an interesting decision by the Husky staff of do they kick it off or like uh, John Wales is setting up to do. So they will kick it off as opposed to punting it and getting the ball up into this wind. Cougars should come out with pretty good field position off of this uh, free kick. It is. Not a great day for Jim Lambright so far. Good move would be the squib kick. The question that will be answered in a moment is how is Chad Davis as Washington State will get set to take over the football for the first time. That goes out of bounds. Now normally the ball of course would go to 35 on a kickoff and with the boot coming from the 20 the Cougars out of the ball midfield now. Richardson, the see referee in the white hat, and here Muffs. See first is working to make your banking. There's that signal again. Those hands are still cold. <laughs> He'll get it straight. The straight. First down. Well, the Cougars with great field position, and it is Chad Davis who comes out at quarterback for Washington State. Paul Reed on the offensive line trying to fire up the rest of the gang. I'll tell you what, I did not expect. 30, 29 points to be scored in this ball game. to be quite honest with you. You know, going into this, I was thinking if the Cougar offense could manage one touchdown that they'd be in it. So far, they've been able to put three touchdowns on the board against a relatively tough Husky off or defense. Again, Knuff in motion and the little pitch back. This is Hicks, and he gets about four on the first down play. Ink Aliaga, the sophomore out of Honolulu, coming up to make the stop. Nice little change of pace by... Washington State and the offensive coordinator, Coach McDonnell, getting a feeling his tight ends can get the hook. 
and just change it up a little bit. Hicks doing a good job finding the seam and picking up about five on that first down carry. Second down and a little better than five for the Cougars with Hicks in the backfield. Again, the same formation. Again, Knuff in motion. Davis to throw. Has time. Going deep for Kennedy. Overthrown. Reggie Reeser on the coverage. The pass thrown just a bit too tall for Albert Kennedy. Actually, Albert had inside position that time on Reeser, and Chad led him a little bit too far outside. But uh, actually, you know, that's when you're trained to throw is lead that ball away toward the sidelines. Reggie had good coverage that time and, and uh, actually pretty good throw, but not quite there. Mike Price like, looking for his second Apple Cup victory. Sonny? I was just going to say that, uh, you know, he's not shying away from it. He remembers that game two years ago with that third quarter being so explosive. So we expect him to put it up in the air. And the third quarter has turned into kind of a nemesis for Washington State. They have now been outscored by their opponents in the third quarter. Davis, time to throw, guns it out. Caught, first down at the 31-yard line. Bryant Thomas and Reggie Reeser delivering a blow to Thomas after Thomas had made the catch and was down. And it looks like a cramp the way Albert Kennedy is helping out Bryant Thomas. Yeah, it didn't look like Reggie really laid the hammer to him. How do you get a cramp when it's freezing? <laughs> Not like you're sweating a lot of electrolytes out. See that it might be a, just a little bit on the end here where he slips and goes down and just wants to get the bound and, and get the first down. Good throw and catch as Chad Davis is really putting the ball on the money. Something about this type of weather that brings out the best in Cougar quarterbacks because Chad has been excellent so far. Brian Thomas, three catches for 71 yards. They're still working on him at the 31. And he gets up and runs off under his own power. Fourth play of the drive coming up. The Cougars started at midfield. They have a first down just outside of the Husky 31 with 12.39 left to play in the third quarter. And Washington State leading Washington 23-6. A lot of the strategy going into your offensive game plan is making sure that when you do get the short porch, take advantage of it. Got a penalty flag. Russell Hairston went over to cover Chad Carpenter, and Hairston actually was two yards on the Cougar side of the line of scrimmage and made contact with Carpenter. I don't think it's a flag unless he makes contact, but he did make contact, so the offside, offside call. Boy, we're Dead seeing some off. weird things <laughs> in this game. Made five yards. Always do. There's always something different, whether it's guys catching passes in the end zone, running into a snowbank, and being disappeared from the camera for a while. Ruster, Russell Harrison just not thinking. Yeah, you know, he's got to come up and play defense and, and maybe pressure a little bit, but not be three yards deep uh, in the Cougar back. Yeah. You got to stay focused out there. And uh, Russell, as a senior, you know, as, should have experience and maturity to, to not do that. Good look at Chad Davis, the sophomore out of the San Diego area. Hicks in the backfield. He'll take the pitch. Knuff was out front trying to lead the way. Might have an offensive face mask call as Hicks reached back to try to stiff arm Inkaliaga and picked up his face mask. It will be basically no gain on the play pending the flag. Yep, I think they got David Knuff as he as he came around in his motion from his H-back position and, and tried to hook Rich, Richie Chambers, you'll see him uh, right there. Just the re referee's gonna call him for holding, saying that he latched on. There what you talk about, Sonny, was the offensive face mask. Uh, that wasn't called, but the holding will take that back 10 yards and interrupt the, the Cougar drive that was... It's a trade-off. Now we're back to first and 17. Line of scrimmage will be the 37 yard line. Cougars need to get down to the 21. Russell just down. did it again. No contact that time. No though. contact. Six penalties against Washington State. Sparks tries it outside. Ends up picking about five yards back up on that first down play. I think this is all part of Washington State's plan. They're just trying to eat up more time off the clock. Not a bad move. Uh, I think the Cougar coaches have to be real proud of the Cougar offensive line right now. They've done an excellent job today. Perhaps Scott, Scott Eaton, Chad Eaton got them all fired up with this week's comments. Derek Sparks goes off uh, a little gimpy. 
You don't want to see that. He's been the main man. There you see Derek Sparks. He's got 35 yards uh, so far this afternoon. His buddy Kevin Hicks with 38, and that's about four times as much as they had last week against Oregon State. Not Napoleon Kaufman, but a pretty good combo. Davis and Jay Dumas misreading each other. And that ball going harmlessly out of the end zone. Third and 11 coming up from the 32. And Washington State in a situation where if they don't get the first down, they'd like to pick up at least another five or six yards to give Tony Truant a little better opportunity. As you see the numbers on Chad Davis so far today, a big average per completion. Well, here's where the... Uh the guessing game comes from offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Are the Huskies going to come with the blitz? They have been on third and long. Let's watch Inkaliaga in particular up the middle. After a great start, Davis is now three of his last nine. The three have been pretty big plays, though. Davis has time. Guns it for Kennedy. Made the catch. He'll be shy of the first down. His knees hit, and he's actually getting a pretty good spot but it still appears to be a little shy of the first down. Looks like we're going to have another fourth and half a yard situation. Let's see what Mike Price elects to do here. So far on fourth down, he's been going after it. I'll tell you, Chad Davis, when he's had to, has to deliver the ball right on the money. That was an excellent throw right there by the young man. Huskies in different, decent coverage, but it was just an outstanding throw. Well, we talked a little bit at the beginning how he has to have good play by the guys that are seniors. Good blocking that time by the offensive line and uh, Kennedy going down and scooping it out. Mike Price is elected to go for it again. It's Sparks in the backfield. They've got about a half a yard to go. Sparks tries it, and looks like he fell forward far enough for the first down, and the Huskies are saying that they had stopped him. The spot. It'll be a measurement. It's awful close. The linesman, line judge, came out and marked it. Huskies stopped them. Based on that spot, the Huskies have stopped the Cougars, and there's the Great job. The Huskies Indication. needed a lift this afternoon. They haven't had much to really be happy about since the first quarter. And I don't know, he has scored a touchdown earlier in the day being stopped initially and then continuing on with his leg work. But here, no place to go. Ink did an outstanding job. Ink Galeaga came out and took Lewis out of it, really initiated the contract and was the uh, aggressor. And Richie, uh, or David Kilpatrick came in and, and made a nice sturdy tackle. So that's one. Maybe you would have liked to kick the field goal. It is still Ted Stark at quarterback. First and 10 Huskies from the 22. Thomas, the fullback, going nowhere. Stood up along the line of scrimmage. Tried to string it out. Whoa, big late hit. Big, big late hit. Going to be called on the Huskies as Patrick Kessie came in and delivered the blow. Boy, he's been doing that. Uh, he's been real close the whole season. You know, he's just fired up. I don't think he intends to be a cheap shot artist out there. But he's just so aggressive that he just got to you got to stop when that whistle blows with the spot it's a loss of a yard on the play for Thomas Personal and the penalty will be big against the offense so the play counts as that's going to be a dead ball foul I believe so it'll go second down and a whole bunch taking it half the distance to the goal Patrick Casey has been pulled off by Coach Lambroyd just to let him know, look, we got to play heads-up football if we're going to come in here and win this game. That's not what is going to keep the drive alive and certainly doesn't help Ted Stark, your young quarterback. Second and 21 on your own 11 is not what you look forward to. Sixth penalty against the Dogs. The crowd on their feet, making a lot of noise in Martin Stadium. Stark to throw it. Over the middle, his first completion as a Husky. It'll pick up about four yards. Good coverage by Washington State over the middle. Coach Doba and his defensive staff now are planning things a little bit different. They're going to be a little softer and then come aggressively with the down four to try to get into Stark's face. But I don't think they have to put as much pressure to force the bad throw. And 17 now for the Huskies. The ball on the 15. Stark pressured. Throws it away. Throw it away at the feet of Napoleon Kaufman. Stark was drilled by Donnie Sasa after delivering the ball. Well, the good thing about that is Ted Stark did have the athletic ability to avoid a sack and get rid of the ball somewhere near a receiver and try and get a good punt situation here. Big Donnie Sasa playing a little game inside the outside defensive ends, stunning inside and creating a little havoc. 
Nice bit of pressure with just the down four. Last time the Huskies were in this situation, the ball was snapped over the head of Jeff Prince for a safety. Cougars are coming after him. Good snap this time. Hey, he's got it. He's going to run for it. He's got room. He's got a long way to go yet. First down, Huskies. And Singor Mobley might be flagged for a late hit. He yes. will. Yes, he is. This will be a huge play for the Huskies. Prince running for the first down and add 15 onto it. Well, the Huskies with a little bit of razzle-dazzle. I'm not sure if this was planned as Spence came up the middle. I think Prince just made the decision that he wasn't going to get that ball off. That's exactly right. And he took off. Walker had a chance to maybe hem him in, but he's unable to make the play. So really, you got to credit Jeff Prince with a major league decision. And he's just going to get the heck out of Dodge, and that's, fortunately, it worked out for him. That's twice this year he's been able to do that. Earlier in the season, he came up with a big play like this, and the Huskies failed to capitalize on it. There's the late hit right there. Perhaps that will get a spark lit underneath these Husky offensive linemen, and we can get that ball downfield. First and 10 now at the Cougar, 47. 22-yard run and a 15-yard penalty. And Kaufman in the backfield. It's Napoleon weaving his way down to about the 42 yard line and really protecting the football. He's seen a lot of tape of Washington State's defense. Mike Price's team likes to reach in and strip the football, and Napoleon not going to allow that. Good play on first down for the Huskies. They got away from this a little bit. They had a lot of success in the first quarter, and they need to get back to it. It's good to see. Now they have decent field position. It opens up some uh, different uh, alternatives for them. Stark is the quarterback, though. Probably doesn't have the full playbook to work with as a second-team guy, not getting all the reps. Limited play calling for Diedrich and the offensive staff. Cougars show blitz. Here they come. Kaufman gets outside against it, but gets turned back. He got just inside the 40. It'll be third and short for the Huskies. That's what the Cougars would like to do is force Napoleon to run sideline to sideline. The middle is really banged up here is not a lot of Cougars are there but then Mark Fields using his speed to get outside and wrap up Napoleon not much of a gain but here's a big play for the Huskies if they want to keep some momentum the Palouse Posse pretty tough when it's cold out interesting note on Washington State's defense and they have allowed just six so far today here comes the blitz Kaufman is blitzed behind the line of scrimmage. Fantastic call by Bill Doba and his defensive staff. And one of the officials took a big hit and went down hard on the Cougar sideline. And very quickly, the Cougar training staff, Mark Smaha and company, and Mike Price in there as well to attend to him. Napoleon Kaufman is a little bit slow, and, and, and you got to believe that there's only so many cuts that that toe is going to take. You see a That's whole right. host of Cougars getting penetration and stopping that option play. Let's go down to the sideline to Paul Sorensen. Thanks, bud. The intensity level's picking up big time down here. Big break for the Huskies. Nearly a block punt for Washington State. Heads up play by the punter. He gets outside of containment. Personal foul, but the defense steps in and does a great job. Also, watch the matchup between Bruner, the tight end for Washington, and Mark Fields, the middle linebacker for Washington State. It's been a dandy. Back upstairs. Crocodile Sorensen on the sideline that time. Fourth and four from the 42. A little bit of a wobbly snap, but the kick gets away, and it will just bounce. Torrey Hunter picks these up sometimes. It won't this time, and the Huskies are able to stop it from going into the end zone. They've downed it at the Cougar one. Frank Garcia down to knock the ball back towards the field of play before it got into the end zone. He needed to make something positive on special teams today after that snap over the head. 7.09 left to play in the third quarter. The Cougars lead it by 17. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. Did you know you could be paying hundreds of dollars too much each year for your life insurance? Well, it won't cost you a cent to find out. That's because a company called Select Quote Insurance Services continually compares the cost of term life policies from the nation's top rated insurance companies. For example, if you're a man 35 years old and a non smoker, you can get $150,000 coverage for just $165. If you're 45, you can get $250,000 coverage for just $260. Call now and Select Quote will mail to you absolutely free a personalized price comparison of the five lowest quotes to study in the privacy of your own home. 
Remember, these are unbiased quotes from companies aggressively bidding for your business. There's no obligation whatsoever for the price comparison, and it's free. Get the most life insurance for the least amount of money, period. Call Select Quote now and see how much you can really save. For Select Quote's free comparison service, call 1-800-253-8855. That's 1-800-253-8855. Message. 23 to 6, the Cougars over the Huskies so far in Apple Cup 94. And coming up Monday evening, November 28th, join Chuck Nelson and Don Poyer for Husky Profile. They've got a look back at the Husky football season. They'll tell you about a player who played for both the Cougars and the Huskies in the Apple Cup. And Don will go one-on-one -on -one with Bob Bender, the Washington basketball coach. That's Husky Profile coming up Monday night. Chad Davis looking over, actually, at the Husky sideline. He's looking at the gentleman who controls the timeouts on television. And as soon as they see the signal, they'll go into the huddle and call the play that Mike Price and his staff have signaled in. Well, here's the spot on the field where Mike Price has to decide, OK, I've got to be conservative because I don't want to give up a, a big play to the Husky defense that was very prevalent in their game against Cal. Let's get a first down here. Let's blow the Huskies off the line of scrimmage and see if we can't just pick up enough for a first down here. Washington State with 245 yards of total offense, just 61 on the ground, though, and they'll need to bang out a little bit of that right here. You saw Donovan Schmidt. He'll be trying to stop it from his outside linebacker spot. A little hurdle over the top by Derek Sparks, and that will net about a yard. So now the linemen won't have their feet on the goal line as they line up. The Cougar linemen actually looked like they were defending the goal line. <laughs> they were down on all fours, ready to fire out. Very precious turf down here. It sure is. Lewis Jones has had his share of Apple Cup memories. Big hitter. Jensen, also a backup linebacker in for the Huskies. They're stacking things up on the line of scrimmage. A little second effort by Kevin Hicks will pick him back up an extra yard. Looked like he was going to go down at about the one, but he was able to get forward close to the four-yard line with the spot. There you see big Steve Hoffman, who got penetration that time and wasn't able to get his arms wrapped around Hicks, but that was dangerously close to a tackle in the background. He hasn't had many opportunities today, Cleet, to be in that Cougar backfield, and at that, that time he was able to get some penetration. Third down, seven yards to go from their own four for Washington State. And they'll try it on the ground again. Sparks hit at the line of scrimmage. They'll give him progress to the five. So the Cougar punting team will come on, and it has been a while since George Martin has had to punt the football. In fact, you have to go back to the first quarter to the very first possession by Washington State the last time Martin was on the field and he had just a 33 yard kick so the Huskies looking as though they're going to end up with some outstanding field position here. Well I noticed when I threw the ball on the field to the official he dropped it. <laughs> Let's see if there's a little moisture on that thing when he's snacking <laughs> it back there. Well this is the tight formation from a from a punt protect standpoint. Snap is good. Pressure, but Martin gets it away and a good kick. Neal back near midfield will make the catch over his shoulder and picks up about four on the return. So all said and done, Washington State doing a pretty good job on that punt and coverage. 23 to 6, the Cougars lead the Huskies. 5.07 left to play in the third quarter. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. Reason number three, to race to McDonald's. The Quarter Pounder with Cheese Extra Value Meal. A hot, steaming Quarter Pounder with cheese. Large, crispy, golden fries. An icy Coke, all just $2.99. $2.99, just one more reason to choose McDonald's. Reason number four, to race to McDonald's. The McChicken Extra Value Meal. A hot, tender McChicken sandwich. Large, crispy, golden fries. An icy Coke, all just $2.99. $2.99, another irresistible reason to choose McDonald's. Get in on the excitement of women's basketball. Join the Huskies for their breakthrough championship season in the doghouse. You'll see the best in the country play pure basketball up close and in person. You'll see every team in the power pack Pac-10 and make history with the dogs as they host the first ever women's preseason NIT game against Northwestern. And for every season ticket you buy, you'll get a two-for-one pass on Alaska Airlines or Horizon Air. This is a veteran team ready to make its mark. Certified 100% Husky. Call 543-2200 for your season tickets today. 
Husky football on the Cougar 46 yard line as we return to action. Washington State leading it 23 to 6. Let's go down to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen. Thanks a lot, bud. Down on the sidelines here, you can see James Darling, one of the wounded warriors for Washington State, hurt his right knee, but I want James to tell us about when you did it. What happened? Uh, against Arizona State, I tore it on, a, on a, a kickoff, and then back out here, it just locked up again, so. When did you do it, dude? Right in the first half or right before halftime? It was right before halftime on, uh, when Childs got that sack. Uh, I came through the hole on a blitz, and I uh, just uh, got hit from the side, and then that was, that was it. They do great things with the scope and Washington State's going to a bowl game. You expect to be back for that? Oh, yeah, I'll be back in the bowl game. I'm this guy's a stud. I wouldn't uh, deny anything that he says. James Darling, the outstanding linebacker for Washington State. Back to you, bud. James Darling from Kettle Falls, Washington was the class president for the Kettle Falls Bulldogs. And unfortunately, we have not received any new donations for the Paul Sorensen Hat Club. So we need to see what we can do there. He had the bad one on again. Gary Emanuel on the left. Bill Doba, the Cougar defensive coordinator on the right. They've got their work cut out for him here as Ted Stark remains at quarterback for the Huskies. He's taken over for Damon Heward. He's been in control the entire second half. And he'll throw on first down. The little screen to Leon Neal. And Neal slips a tackle and gets out of bounds inside the 40. Good little dump off. Excellent job by Ted. You know, he's, that was just kind of a, he just flicked it out there with just his wrist. Leon Neal is a, is a very dependable back, as we know. Uh, Napoleon's back in there now. But Leon can do the job. Last week he rushed for 80 yards against California. Ted Stark's got to get a big play out of this offense. He can't be content with just a little five-yard dump off. So he's got to get Bjornsson the ball or perhaps Vic Bruner running down the middle. All those first yards on the first series for the Huskies. And since then, there's not been much for Napoleon Kaufman. Mark Fields getting tangled up a bit with Frank Garcia the center for the Huskies at the tail end of that running play. Huskies trying just to pick up the first down there, and I'm not sure they did it with the little dive off the option, and that'll bring up third and short. The last time they uh, elected to go on third and short, they went with the option, and Napoleon got sacked. See what else they can come up with here. They've been very successful out of the deep set, but Napoleon is not in the game. Yes, he is. He's back in the deep set, one back set. I guess you give it to the Heisman hopeful. Thomas, the fullback in front, third and a yard for the Huskies. Blitz by the Cougars. Stark barely got the handoff off. With the spot, it appears Kaufman has the first down. It'll be very close. Boy, that Cougar defense, when they come, they really come. They've got a lot of speed over there. He was very lucky to get that handoff, but I believe it's enough for a first down. Well, one of the things is when you have a young quarterback in, he doesn't vary his cadence as much. And so they were able to time that perfectly, although they almost overran it. Napoleon almost squeaked through there. Officials bringing the chains on for the measurement. And let's see. Jim Lambright with exactly four minutes left. Whoa, they're short by about an inch. And I'll tell you what, in this stage, you got to go for it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Quarterback sneaks work for the Cougars today, and I don't see why it wouldn't work here for the Huskies. Well, the, the Cougars have been snake bit a little bit on some of these fork down and short plays. Oregon was able to go over the top to Big Wilcox for a touchdown, and I would guess that even though it's an important play, Washington State will be a little conservative and not sell out, making sure that they keep everything in front of them. Keep in mind, Ted Stark is 6'4". He can kind of fold himself over, perhaps, and get the first down. The Cougar defense trying to get the fans into it, and they have responded. First down for the Huskies, Ted Stark on the keeper. Coaches always say you should be able to pick up at least one yard. That's because they don't have to pick it up anymore. That's right. <laughs> Well, you got big Frank Garcia, 65, leading the way down there, and he can hold his own pretty much against anybody in this league. Can slow down for you here. Garcia, 290. High field, 285, creating the little, just enough for Ted Stark to wiggle and worm for that first down. First and 10 now on about the 35 and a half yard line, and the Huskies have a chance here now with a pretty good drive, even though it started with great field position inside the Cougar 50. Mix up in the backfield. Thomas was fortunate to get the football and then was hammered by the men in crimson. 
At first down, by the way, the first one of the second half for the Huskies other than the run by Jeff Prince on the fake punt. Maybe they ought to put Jeff Prince in at that tailback position. He showed me some. Well, I think the man they've got to have in there, Cleet, you got to have Napoleon Kaufman in the backfield and give him the football with Richard Thomas leading the way up through the tackle. Well, it's not like he has been ineffective. I think Napoleon's been the best aspect of this offense, but uh, they're giving a little bit of chance to Richard Thomas, hoping to cross him up and get a big one like he did down in Miami. But the Cougar defense made some adjustments following that first drive where Kaufman picked up the bulk of his yardage and he hasn't had much sense. Start going for it all. Walker intercepts it in the end zone. They'll mark his progress outside at about the one yard line. But the interception by Brian Walker, that is his second of the year. And it brings out the jaws again from the Cougar fans. Again, with a lead like they have, they can afford to keep things in front of them. And Brian Walker did an excellent job. No real pressure on Stark, but Janoski looked like he had a much flatter angle. And Walker, in fact, caught that ball and just took his momentum in and sat down. And so the official's going to mark his progress right there when he caught the ball at about the two-yard line. Second turnover of the game by the Huskies. Washington State doing a much better job this year in terms of turnover margin than they have in a while and it has paid off in some victories so again the cougar offense with very poor field position and a very interesting formation as the cougars have the one running back very very deep in the formation and changed the timing a bit and allowed a hole to open up and a little skirmish breaking out between david ritchie and paul reed that's taken care of it'll be second down and about six for Washington State. Coach McDonnell up here saw the, the pressure that Hoffman was bringing when they were running a little bit of that lateral uh, lead back type of thing. He said, let's just go to one back, hit the quick hitter, and get out of here. And uh, there they picked up a pretty good four and a half yards there on first down. Second and six from the six for the Cougars. Picks about a yard deep in the end zone. They'll try it left side, Kilpatrick. Lamar Lyons there to make the stop, gain of a couple of yards and a flag. Well, they threw that flag after the play developed, and I think that it might be offsides Huskies. If it was a motion on the Cougars, they would have blown that thing dead. But they let the play run out, so we'll see what the official has to say. Nope. There's those hands. <laughs> he loves hands. doing that, doesn't he? I was trying to convince him anyway. <laughs> It will remain second down. They will spot the ball at the three. So it'll be second and nine from the three. Huskies with an interesting defensive lineman here where they've got Lewis Jones down in a down lineman stance and trying to use his quickness maybe to, to put a little pressure and get some penetration into the backfield. Still Hicks in the backfield for Washington State. Huskies think the ball was going to the right side they really bunched it up and they guessed right but Hicks bounces it outside has the first down out over the 20 yard line Kevin Hicks with the big run for a Cougar first down well that play will not go down in the ESPN highlights or anything but it's as big as any play that the Cougar offense has put together that just buys them a little bit of time one minute 34 left in this third quarter and buys them a lot of breathing room there you see the mix-up in the defensive lineman stance. Lewis Jones, like I said, is playing in the down lineman at 210, 215 pounds, and he gets manhandled by Eric Moore, and we're off to the races. But Lamar Lyons needs to make that tackle. He was in position to make the tackle, and he just didn't wrap him up. Usually a pretty good tackler is Lyons. Clock moving again after the chains are set. 110 left in the third quarter, and we've got, I believe, a timeout whistle. Let's see, it's against Washington State. They have used their first of the second half. 23 to six, the Cougars have the lead with a minute 10 left in the third quarter. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. Okay, listen up. Most of you grew up with just three networks. Now you're cruising the cable highway with the up and down button on the remote control, aren't you? Well, I'm here at this prestigious university to get you up to date. You ready for some new math? These are the number of college football games shown on all these networks last year. And this is the number of college football games shown on Prime Sports Northwest. Now, where are you going to park that remote this season? Hold that thought.
This is Jim Lambright. If you want to see a winning team with a winning attitude, watch the Huskies play Sunday night this season on Prime Sports Northwest. This is your remote. These are the directions for your remote. You've never read these, and you don't need to, because this button is all you need to push to bring you more college football this fall than you find using any other button, even if you knew what they were for. Washington State leading Apple Cup 94 by 17 points with a minute 10 left to play in the third quarter. Washington State now 273 yards of total offense. The Huskies 152. Kevin Hicks now 63 yards rushing. The Cougars have 87 yards on the ground compared to 102 for the Dogs. The Cougar offense has been very effective so far in uh, taking care of that football, which is a big part of the game plan. First down and 10 from the 23 for Washington State. Knopf running that H back in motion again. The counter and running room for Hicks. And he spins away from a tackle and got about seven yards on that first down play. And Washington State getting the benefit of a little field position now as Hicks is limping a bit. At first, I thought it was a much bigger hole than it, than it really was, but I thought he might have a bigger gain than that. The Husky defense needs to regroup a little bit, Cleet. That's a good play for the Cougars. Uh, the Kevin Hicks has, has done an outstanding job running the football. Cougars just keeping the Huskies off balance a little bit with that tight end changing the balance and changing the strength. They were bouncing back and forth on the defensive line, unsure of what the strong side of the formation was going to be. Trips to the right for Washington State on second down and call it four. They go up the middle with Sparks, and he is hit hard by Lewis Jones. It will be close to a first down. Clay Reese, the big senior right tackle for Washington State. A little slow getting up. He's fine. Chad Davis yelled for the trainers, and Clay said no way. Oh, Paul Reed, I'm sorry. I thought it was Clay Reese. I saw the zero. Reed, who's playing with a broken hand. That can't be a lot of fun on a cold day like this to try to get some leverage. Well, actually, I think Paul Reed has played his best game of his career so far today. Offensive line for Washington State has been excellent. Uh, really opening some holes in the Husky defense that's trying to penetrate now and create something. That last play, Justin Thomas almost ran himself out of the play completely, and he was an easy target for that kickout block. Big Paul Reed, though, he's got, you can see that left hand all bandaged and padded up. Not quite enough for the first down, the uh, official leg in the way, but it's, again, a a two inch the official kind of thing. leg the official leg I thought, I thought that was i thought the official leg in the apple cup was chuck nelson <laughs> well let's rub that into chucky every time he comes to the palouse nothing but bad memories of wide right uh it was closer than oh. wide right those are the kind you get at home right guys not at our home 13 seconds you see left in this third quarter and uh, it does end the Cougars' advantage of having the wind behind their back. They probably will not get this playoff. They have five seconds left. They can snap it if they want to. Let's see if they do. They're not in a big hurry and that's the end of the third quarter. So the only scoring in the third quarter is safety as Washington State picked up two points on the snap out of the end zone out of punt formation by the Huskies. 15 minutes left in Apple Cup 94. You're watching it on Prime Sports Northwest. Hi, I'm Chuck Nelson. Join me for Seahawks Close Up on Prime Sports Northwest. Seahawks Close Up is a different kind of show designed to take you inside Seahawks football. You'll go behind previously closed doors, explore the personal side of the NFL, and step into the heart of the action like never before. So, for a fresh, entertaining, and informative look inside Seahawks football, join me for Seahawks Close Up on Prime Sports Northwest. Okay, listen up. Most of you grew up with just three networks. Now you're cruising the cable highway with the up and down button on the remote control, aren't you? Well, I'm here at this prestigious university to get you up to date. You ready for some new math? These are the number of college football games shown on all these networks last year. And this is the number of college football games shown on Prime Sports Northwest. Now, where are you going to park that remote this season? Hold that thought. This 
program is authorized under television rights granted by Washington State University. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. The Palouse Posse has lassoed a heater on the Cougar sideline. 15 minutes of football left, and if this score holds, what is this going to do for the storytelling about the Apple Cup and snow? Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to wait and delay my response for about 15 minutes because I don't want to jinx anybody. Cougars coming out. They seem to have the momentum. They seem to be playing much more intense, but this is another short yardage situation. They've got to win. Needed about a half yard. Davis tried the left side. The spot appears to be good enough for the first down. I would imagine we're going to see another measurement, however. Well, the marker is set down right at the 33-yard line, and the official, the linesman, is marking it on the other side of the 33, so I think he picked it up. <laughs> the sideline guy, who doesn't have a whole lot of say in this matter, he just has to put the marker down. He's already picked it up and moving it, so he's made the decision that it's a Cougar first down. They officially what? moved the chain. <laughs> a little suspense there. Yeah, huh? these guys must be frozen. And the crowd follows up. Glenn Johnson, the public address lead here, and announces first down. Cougars come back out with two tight ends. Cougars are 5 of 11 now in third down conversions. And up, bouncing around again. Sparks will try the left side. And he picks up a couple of yards after being met by Ink Aliaga. A little battle between a couple of strong-willed guys there, and Sparks able to fall forward and pick up a couple extra yards. Lawyer Malloy coming up to make sure he does go down. Sparks, both the Cougar running backs today have really done a good job of using their power and their legs to gain all the yardage they can after being hit initially. Really one of the best running exhibitions we've seen so far this year, Sonny. Three and a three on that play by Sparks. It's second and seven from the 36 for Washington State. And the Cougars will like to keep the clock moving. Davis, pump fake going up the sideline. Reeser is there, but he's out of bounds. Brian Thomas there. He's out of bounds. Trying to catch the Huskies napping, and uh, Reggie Reeser would have none of it as he was playing off of Brian Thomas by about 10 yards. Davis just pumped once and was hoping to catch him, but... Uh, the Huskies playing fairly soft in the secondary. Well, he did a good job, Davis. He was looking to the right, pump fake to the right-hand side or the near side of the screen, and then threw back to his left. And uh, basically, it looked to me like he was just throwing it away. Cougars have a balanced rushing attack this afternoon. 15 carries for Kevin Hicks, 17 for Derek Sparks. Hicks leading the way in yardage. Third down and call it seven for Washington State. Davis guns it out, and that one almost intercepted. And had Lamar Lyons got a hand on it, he'd have gone all the way. Rather, Russell Hairston. And Davis was hammered after unloading the football. He was unloaded on by David Ritchie, and the official unloaded the flag from his pocket. And Jim Lambright just shaking his head. Now, you just can't believe the way that things are going against him this afternoon. And the official, though, made a good call. I mean, the ball was gone, and anything as Late far as contact was not necessary. 15 yards, first down. And that'll move it on down and keep the drive alive. Boy, third and eight, Clayton, your defense finally comes up with a decent play on the far side of the screen. Clearly, the ball was gone. Can't quite tell if he slammed into the turf or not on that replay. Well, it's a, that's, a, that's the official, that's the referee's decision. He's the guy right there, and it's a judgment call all the way. It looked like uh, David Ritchie, in defense of him, had his head down and was just charging and wasn't really had his head up looking to see if the, the throw had been made. Seventh penalty of the day against the Huskies is a big one. Cougar first down at the Husky 49. On the ground, Hicks tries to cut it outside, fumbles the football. Huskies surrounded. The ball goes out of bounds. Jeez. The Huskies never you know, got possession. It's Cougar football. We saw it in the first half where there was a fumble and a guy tries to pick it up here. We're tied in Little League football. You land, you fall on the football. Unbelievable. I can't <laughs> even comment on it. First of all, Hicks bounces this outside and gets stripped. You see Lewis Jones punching it loose. Uh, Lawyer Malloy actually makes a good play to scoop it out there and then they can't get control of it. They were trying to fall on it, just the ball was popping out on that cold, hard surface, 
and uh, funny things happen, and that is a huge play, huge benefit to the Cougs. Washington State with a huge break, and funny things happen oh. in the Apple Cup, and boy, Ooh. what a hit by Inc. Aliaga. Tremendous hit. Good job of filling the hole there. Running back there will remember that hit. Inc. Aliaga hit it so hard, I think his, his whole shoulder pad that he's wearing just came unglued. He'll probably have to go over and see the equipment man on the sidelines, maybe the trainer for a little bit also, because that was a heck of a collision. We've had several Huskies have stingers so far this season, and if you've had one of those, Cleet, uh, I'm sure that you haven't, but uh, they're very, very painful. You see that Chad Davis has to have a bandana, a scarf around his neck to keep warm. Clay Reese just lets his hair grow to do the job for him. Chad Carpenter, the catch, he'll be run out of bounds and slammed down, and that should be a flag. And there it goes. And the flag actually was thrown at a couple of the Huskies who are wearing the wraps on the sideline. The official pointing at them, not at Hairston, for throwing Chad Carpenter down. And emotions getting the best of the Huskies right now. Frustration is the best term. Well, they had stopped the Cougar drive. It was third and 15. Yeah, now they're, they're losing their composure, making mental yards. mistakes. And the end of the run. And it's First going down. all the Cougars' way. Here you see just a very straightforward hitch route by Carpenter, waiting for that ball, makes a good bite move to get around Lions, and then Harrison's gonna come up and make a good play to tackle him. Now, this is this is what he doesn't need. This is what he doesn't need. You can tell Harrison knows that it was a little too much too late. Boy, this series I know, uh, frustrating Coach Lambright, you know, the players just have to keep their head screwed on properly. First and 10 Cougars at the 32 of Washington. Sparks going nowhere. Okay. Let's go down to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen. Mike Price was very concerned, bud, about uh, the cohesive problem. The offense, defense, defense was dogging the offense. They got together last night, had a great team meeting, and really came out fired up today. And then when it snowed, it seems like a whole new attitude for Washington State. The one thing Price did not want to have his offense do, though, was turn the football over and lead to a touchdown. Cougars dodged a big-time bullet on that fumble just a few series snaps ago. Back to Steve, back upstairs. The Cougars have not turned it over so far today. The Huskies have turned it over twice. Washington State has just used their second time out of the second half. So the Cougars with one more opportunity to stop the clock. They are hoping that that won't be a factor with 12.09 left in this football game. Washington State seemingly in control at 23 to six. Huskies have to score three times. Even if they score a touchdown and two point conversions, they have to have the ball in the end zone or score three times. We will take a short break, 12.09 to go in the game. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. With Sunmaker's Express Service to Hawaii, you can fly round trip to Honolulu, stay four days and three nights, and pay just $350. 350 bucks. So now you can surf in the real Hawaii without being wiped out. At least financially. Sunmaker's Hawaii. Holiday gift certificates are now available. Call your travel agent for details. If your home, auto, and life insurance is in the hands of your coverage could be a bit unstable. But call a farmer's insurance agent for a farmer's friendly review. And one agent can bring all your policies together, get rid of gaps, and keep costs down. And saving money will seem like a piece of, well, you know. America can depend on farmers for home, auto, and life. A new set of academic standards will go into effect in 1995. To practice, play, or receive an athletic scholarship, freshmen will need a minimum grade point average in at least 13 core courses in high school and a minimum score on the SAT or the ACT. Make it a point to talk to your coach or guidance counselor about these requirements. Prepare yourself now. It's never too early to hit the book. This message provided by the NCAA. 23 to 6, the Cougars lead the Huskies with 12.09 left to play in the football game. Bud Namick along with Cleet Casper, Sonny Sixkiller, and Paul Sorensen. And coming up Monday evening at 10 o'clock, another edition of the Crimson and the Gray. We'll update you on everything going on in Washington State Cougar Athletics, an outstanding 
football season. The Cougar football team headed to a bowl game. The volleyball team headed to postseason play. The soccer team was in the NCAA tournament. And we'll talk with Kevin Eastman and take a look at the Cougar men's basketball team. We'll hear from Harold Rhodes and the women's basketball team. Carol and Herb and myself on the Crimson and the Gray next Monday at 10. Well, right now, this Crimson clad Cougar team needs to get it in the end zone one more time, I think, to ice this football game. Second and 11 from the 33 of Washington. Knuff in motion. Little halfback option pass set up. Hicks sidearms it for Kennedy, underthrew it, and it's incomplete. The only guy who had a chance to make that play was Russell Hairston, and he couldn't get his body feet under him <laughs> enough. Oh, again, the Cougars dodged a little bullet there. Absolutely. Hairston scrambling just to try to get his feet underneath him. Hicks throws a, a shot, and you see Lawyer Malloy taking Kennedy out of it. But the official saying that uh, that was legal. <laughs> I don't know how, but, but that was legal. So anything goes now in this last 12 minutes of this football game. Well, you talked about Dave Craig earlier. That was a, a Kevin Hicks, Dave Craig pass. He kind of wound it up and threw it sidearm. The duck. Third and 11. Cougars have not gone to the tight end in a while. Let's see if that reappears. They'll put it on the ground. Hicks cuts it outside. And he'll be about two yards shy of the first down marker. And Lawyer Malloy coming real close to getting another yellow hanky. He came up after Hicks and then bumped the official at the end of the play. Good bit of running, though. Put it to within Tony Truant's field goal position. The wind is still kicking pretty strong in Tony's face. But I think he has the leg to hit this, which will be a 42-yarder against the win. Truant this year, 8 of 15, only 1 of 5 from beyond 40 yards. He's missed a couple of 44-yarders, a 46-yarder. This one on the way, it's got to climb if it's going to get there, and it won't have a chance. <laughs> got to climb? <laughs> it's got to do more than that. <laughs> So the Huskies will take over on the 25 following the missed field goal. 11-15 left in the football game. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. Apollo's Boss is having a store-wide liquidation sale. We're converting inventory to cash, so this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's all up to 50% off. Stylish acrylic home jetted bathtubs are priced to go. Or check out a hot tub for two, just $16.88. And feast your eyes on this complete four-person hot tub with gazebo, only $27.88. If you've ever wanted a quality hot tub at an unbelievable price, shop the Factory Direct hot tub specials during Apollo's Boss giant, giant liquidation, liquidation sale. sale. But hurry, this sale ends on Sunday. This November, Viewer's Choice has it all. The easiest way to get hit flicks and live events at home, hassle-free, instantly, is Viewer's Choice. Just follow the simple pay-per-view ordering instructions, and before you know it, you'll be enjoying the movie or event of your choice in the comfort of your home. You can treat family and friends to a first-run flick or exciting event for the price of just one ticket. And there's no tape to return, no late fees to pay. How easy can it get? That's Viewer's Choice in November. There's the story. The Cougars leading by 17 with 11.15 left to go in Apple Cup 94. Ted Stark remaining at quarterback for the Huskies. A couple folks have decided to go hibernate for the winter. Well, school's out over here now, isn't it? School's never out. We're always <laughs> studying over here. Always searching for that. that. Cleet, Cleet is still in school. <laughs> well, the Huskies got to find a big play here. Bjornsson has been the big man so far, and if I'm Ted Stark, that's who I look for. Napoleon Kaufman, the man he looks for on the handoff, and Kaufman looked like he had a little bit of room and almost looked like he bumped into Patrick Kessie and then lost his footing. There you see Napoleon as uh, he tries to catch Charles White. That is not possible. Charles White was an outstanding running back. I used to love to watch him run. I wanted to see the Huskies win, but Charles White was an outstanding running back. We got a few of those yards against our teams, I know that. <laughs> Napoleon Kaufman was 68 yards on the day now, trying to become the second running back this year to go over 100 against the Cougars. Stark chased, able to get it away. 
And an incomplete pass. There was a lot of crimson chasing Mr. Stark, and he comes up talking to Dwayne Patterson. Dwayne always has a little greeting when he gets some pressure on the quarterback. Well, Leon Bender just put a dramatic move on Trevor Highfield, just tossing him out of the way and then forcing Stark to his bad side or his left side. Lucky to get that ball off and punished for doing it. Ted Stark, two of six for 11 yards. Some numbers on Dwayne Patterson. Great career, Patterson. I'd like to see him pad that career sack stat a little bit here. He's rocking, chomping at the bit on a passing down. The ball thrown high and incomplete. And the Huskies will have to punt it away. Jim Lambright's waving him back, though. They're going to go for it. Let's quickly go to the sidelines to Paul Sorensen. The Hatch Grossmont Community College. Tad DeGrin here's the roommate. But here's the deal. Why isn't Damon Hewitt in the football game? Coach Lambright pulled him out. We've got a new quarterback for Washington Stark. Big time decision back upstairs. So apparently no injury to Damon Hewitt. Well, I wonder what Brock Hewitt thinks about that. That's my main concern is <laughs> Brock, if you're in the game, you're our starting quarterback here at Washington State. We'll keep you in. Here comes the blitz on fourth down. Stark trying to run away from Don Sasa. Holding on the Huskies as Stark delivers it. And Bjornsson can't make the catch covered by Torrey Hunter. A couple of flags back thrown at the feet of Husky linemen. It's a flag on the field. And Washington State, of course, will decline. Offsetting. Offsetting. Oh, the hang on. Against the Cougars as they mistimed the blitz again. And uh, so that'll be offsetting and we'll replay fourth down. Holding on the offense, defense is offside, penalties offset, will repeat fourth down. So the Huskies once again via the penalty keep the drive alive, although it's fourth and, and a few, fourth and about five yards here. Coach Lambright gets one more shot at it. I don't know if Ted Stark wants another shot at it because <laughs> he's been running for his life. Here again, a, a play calling decision. Do you anticipate the blitz or do you look for the Cougars maybe playing a little conservative and, and backing off, forcing Stark to throw the perfect pass? Well, they'll exhort the defense one more time. Fourth and five. Cougars show blitz. Let's see if they come. No, they don't. And Stark delivers it too high. There was a little bit of contact between Bjornsson and Torrey Hunter, but incidental. And it will be an incomplete. No, they did throw the flag There's now flag. late. Well, I, you know, that ball is thrown about 10, 15 yards up above where anybody can catch it. But the officials, yep, they're wiping that off. They're saying that that ball was, was not a not catchable, catchable no, ball. And the little bit of contact First had nothing out. to do with the play. Jeff Lambright obviously not happy about that. Here but that see. was a tough pass to complete anyway. There's a replay of it. And yeah. they're going to rule that, you know, that little bit of contact there didn't influence the receiver's ability to catch that ball. And uh, that's another hometown call for the Cougars. And they've seemed to go, Sonny, all the Cougars' way today. Well, it's tough for a young man to come in and be able to get a hit big completion, fourth and five, a lot of added pressure on your back. and. Uh, you know, the post route has had some success against the Cougars this season. That's what the Huskies were looking for. First down for Washington State at the UW 30. Great field position. And that play whistled dead before it got underway. Ball carrier with a play. Mike Price, you know, just still wants to impart ball. intensity ball into this team. Let's not make these mental First mistakes. He's not going to quit until he hears that final gun because he knows what this Husky defense can do against Cal turning in a couple opportunities into quick touchdowns. And uh, he knows well that you've got to play 60 minutes. He's harped on the Cougars all week. You've got to finish this one out. Nine penalties against Washington State today, eight against the Huskies. Trips to the left for Washington State. On first and 15, Husky show blitz. Sparks might have picked up a yard perhaps is about all 
Huskies really haven't been influenced by this spread formation with the three wide receivers at one side and no tight ends that they've just stayed in their base defense. So if I'm Washington State, I say, okay, they're just going to sit out there with their normal standard base. Let's bring in the two tight ends and see if we can't move them off the ball like we've been so successful so far in. But again, the Cougars come out with the four wide receivers in the package, no tight ends, and Sparks at the one back. And a man uncovered in the slot, Kearney Adams. Davis goes the other way and throws it away from Brian Thomas. Reggie Reeser was there. Nobody was open on that play. I mean, it's uh, he threw it where nobody was going to intercept it. Yeah, I guess m my comment is what's got you here has been the tight end in motion, the H-back picking off some of these uh, lighter defensive linemen and running the ball effectively. Let's not spread it out now. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's get back to uh, running between the tackles. Let's go back to that throwback offense that's been so successful. Well, time certainly is on the Cougars' side. 9.32 left to play in the football game. Cougars lead by 17. They're facing a third 14 here. Davis will be pressured, and he'll try to sneak away and picks up about four yards. Cougar fans looking for a late hit. I don't think they'll get one. Mike Ivalico out of Highline High School in Seattle with the pressure on Davis. Still a long way to go to pick up the first down, and here's a situation where Mike Price may elect instead of kicking to go ahead and go for it, run some more time off the clock. A punt does you no good. Most likely, Tony's not going to be able to drill one into this win, so let's run the, run the clock off and see Huskies what happens. have used their first time out. Cougars lead by 17, facing a fourth down. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. With all the strengths of a GMC truck, the new Jimmy also offers a premium smooth suspension. No shakes, no jolts. It might just be the perfect way to start your day. See the all new Jimmy at your Puget Sound GMC truck dealer today. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer for The Money Store. Does it seem like the weekend is the only time to take care of personal business? The problem is, is that when you're off, just about everyone else is too, but not at the money store. If you're thinking about refinancing your home, you can call the money store this weekend and apply by phone. There's no application fee, and the chances are you'll have an approval by Tuesday. So if you want to refinance your home, call the money store this weekend at 1-800-LOAN-YES. That's 1-800-LOAN-YES. If you like aggressive, explosive basketball excitement, the Huskies are the team for you. With a top 20 ranked recruiting class and impressive returning talent, this team knows it has to play the best to be the best. So come to the doghouse for Bender Ball, up close and in person against Michigan, defending Big 8 champ Missouri, and Pac-10 powerhouses Arizona, UCLA, and Cal. And for every season ticket you buy, you'll get a two-for-one pass on Alaska Airlines or Horizon Air. These dogs are hungry, and they're 100% Husky. Call 543-2200 for your season tickets today. Well, the Cougar fans having a very good time. The Cougar band enjoying this. Washington State with the lead. The Cougars 301 yards of total offense, 157 yards for the Huskies. There's a hat for you. And we can see Sorensen in that one later. Fourth and 10 for Washington State. Davis had Sparks pump fake over the middle, threw it high for Albert Kennedy. And Kennedy paid for it. And the Huskies get the football back. Lofted that one a little bit too soft over the middle, but his defensive teammates are giving him the high five as he comes off, saying, that's all right, baby. We'll take care of it from here. They've done it so far. You see Chad Davis's numbers the second half, not near as effective, but still, he's got the 23-6 lead to deal with. If I was that wide receiver, I'd go find Chad Davis and say, hey, baby, you're going to throw it to me in the middle. Get it down where I can catch it. Especially on a cold day when the bones break a little yeah. easier. Yeah, if you're not going to have the ball in your hands, why get hit? <laughs> 9.15 left for the Huskies. They trail 23-6. to six. Ted Stark still at quarterback for the UW. First and 10 from their own 30. Napoleon Kaufman just leveled at the line of scrimmage. Big saw-saw in there with the collar. 
Don's playing an outstanding game. You know, that guy's got good speed. What does he run the 40 in? Well, I don't think he needs to run the 40. What he needs to run is the four yard, and here he comes off and just really makes a nice inside move against Big Eric Battle, reads the delay, and, and makes a nice tackle. He's I've, got a future in the NFL. I've seen him on punt coverage today running full speed downfield and being the first there on, this, on the scene. A heck of an athlete. We'll miss him. Second and 10, Stark to throw. He's thrown four straight incompletions. And gets the nice catch there by David Janowski. And that should be good enough for a first down for the Huskies. Earlier in the season, Janowski's when the, he was a, the small, smallest receiver that ran precise routes. Here, Ted Stark's able to find him on the sidelines with a nice throw and be able to get the first down. Walker playing off again, making sure all these things are caught in front of him. The out route doesn't give Janowski any chance, though, to turn around and make a move there. Husky still searching for something to break the big one. Pressure, Stark trying to run away from it and gets the completion, but they're going to lose a bundle as Neal is nestled out of bounds by Ronnie Childs. Whole lot of crimson chasing Stark in the football that time. Oh, he drops back, gets sets, and, and he's thinking, OK, I'm going to invite this rush to me to set up a screen. <laughs> yeah. And before he can even think that, He's uh, scrambling for his life. There you see the comparisons, and, and Ted Stark is thrown into a situation, and uh, it's a tough one. It really is. When you're on the road, any road game, you've got less than 10 minutes to go, and you're down. You need to score three times, and uh, defense knows it. They're just going to put their ears back and come right after it. Cougars lining up in the 4-6 alignment. Stark gets it away and throws it too high for Janoski. Boy, it's interesting. You think back to that first Husky drive and how effective they looked on offense against this Cougar defense, and there has not been much at all for Jim Lambright, Bill Diedrich, and crew since then. Well, they've really gotten away or had to get away from their things that were successful, which is Napoleon Kaufman running behind Bruner and Conwell in the three tight end idea. When they got down behind, they were forced to open it up a little bit and get into a formation that doesn't feature Napoleon. Here he's in a split back set, going to block for Damon, maybe go out for a short route. Third and long, start, pressured, got away for a moment from Eaton. Kaufman was actually out of bounds. That's what the flag is for. Napoleon Kaufman went out of bounds, came back in and caught the football. It was a nice catch by Knapp, but yes, it was. Going to all go for not. And a good job, really, of reading what Stark had to do and reading the defense. Great job by Ted Stark to avoid the sack. Shows his athletic ability. By the receiver, he went out of bounds voluntarily. First one to touch the pass. Penalty has lost it down at the previous That is spot. a loss of down penalty as well. You see those big arms on Napoleon. Those are, those can bench 425, but bench pressing isn't going to get him six points today. Just unable to stay in bounds and catch that ball. And again, the things have been going the Cougar way all afternoon. Coming in, that's what you have to expect. You're playing on the road. You have to keep your your head about you and make some good play calling. Here's a good choice right here. I think it's a good idea. Let's kick this thing away. Huskies ended up actually losing a yard or gaining a yard on the spot from that penalty. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but they did. And it's fourth down and off to punt it away. And the Cougars, I would imagine, have somebody assigned to Prince. Well, they have the regular defense in with Torrey Hunter back as the lone. And they came close to a block, and Prince gets a good kick away. And Hunter with the fair catch at the 29. 6.58 remaining in the football game. Washington State trying to reverse a two-game losing streak and pick up their seventh win of the year as they get set to play in the postseason for the second time in the past three years. Well, we haven't seen the snowstorm that we expected. It's been awful cold and a little bit of wind, but the snow has held off at least for the while. And Washington State, I think, has been the beneficiary of having no snow on the field, able to put together a running game that's helped them get the scores on the board. And they will try that running game as much as possible now, you would imagine. And Kevin Hicks loses a yard on that play. Kevin Hicks memorized.
recognizes what he went back to in the Cal game where he had a play up the middle. He decided to bounce it outside and got stripped. There he was thinking about going outside and almost just sat down in his track as opposed to risk the fumble. Nope, not going to do that again. Not going to do that. He learned the good last time. One thing for Washington State, with the off time before a bowl game, they will have the opportunity to have Frank Madu in uniform for the bowl game. Perhaps get James Darling back. James Sanders back as well. The running room for Hicks. And he wraps up the football before being wrapped up himself about a yard shy of a first down. Lawyer Malloy makes uh, no question about whether or not that backs going to go down. When he hits somebody, it's all over. He's a closer. He closes real hard. You'll see it at the end of this play, Cleet. Again, the WSU offensive line is doing their job, creating holes for these big backs to run through, although Hicks is not that big a stature. Richie Certainly Chambers. Hitters. Yeah, Richie Chambers just came up field, maybe hoping to get a sack or something, create something big, and ran himself out of the play. Hicks does a good bit of running to daylight. Third and about a half a yard now for the Cougars. And Chad Davis is going to use the final timeout. 531 left in the football game. So if you were looking for something on the offensive side of the ball, the Cougars have had to use their timeouts in some inopportune situations, but with a 17-point lead. Perhaps that won't be a factor. You're watching the Apple Cup on Prime Sports Northwest. This is a 15-ton bus loaded with 57 passengers, which is being pulled by this loaded-down Chevy, which is being pulled by this fully loaded Dodge, which are all being pulled by this Ford F-Series with the all-new Power Strip, a direct-injected V8 turbo diesel that's the most powerful light truck engine available. The Ford F-Series with a new Power Stroke diesel. It carries 60 comfortably. Buy one today from your local Northwest Ford dealer. Northwest sports fans know the best sports coverage on paper is in the Seattle Post Intelligencer. But did you know there's a cable channel dedicated to Northwest sports coverage? That this one channel features full game coverage of all four Northwest Pac-10 universities, not only for football and basketball, but all these other sports too? Plus, this channel gets behind the score with magazine shows and coaches shows. It carries the Mariners, Seahawks, and Supersonics and shows like Seahawks Close-Up and Supersonics Four Quarter Special. So what's this cable channel? And how do you find it? Northwest Sports and PSN. They're in the P.I. Look at a little bit of the wind blowing in Martin Stadium. Not much scoring in the second half of this football game. The Cougars with a big second quarter. We talked about the Cougars and their usage of timeouts. The interesting thing, though, the Cougars with their three timeouts in the first half, each one eventually kept the drive alive that led to a touchdown. I believe that's Damon Hewitt in the parka there and uh, Patrick Kessie trying to console him and uh, his efforts today. He's not real pleased with the way this outcome is headed. Damon Heward was four of eight for 39 yards in the first half, has not played in the second half. Looks like with the spot, Washington State will prolong this drive and once the chains are set, there will be 526 left to play in Apple Cup 94. My hat's off to the bold and the brave that are still in the stands. They were well prepared for this game, bringing on the uh, appropriate antifreeze with them. <laughs> First and 10 for the Cougars from their own 40. A little pitch to Sparks, who wraps up the football. And again, Lawyer Malloy in on the stop. Gain of about eight for Derek Sparks on that first down play. Most of those head-to-head -head competitions have been won today by Lawyer Malloy. Unfortunately for the Husky side, he's been making all the big hits. Too well, many tackles for the free safety. Well, the defense has been on the field way too long. Uh, give a credit to the Cougar offense today for doing what they have to do, and that's maintaining ball control and 
and uh, keeping their defense off the field and fresh when they do get on the field. Good bit of blocking that time, but McKendoo coming around from his left guard, picking off the inside backer and creating a little seam. Derek Sparks with 21, now 22 carries in this game. By far the most times he has carried the football this season. And he's had some good numbers to account for that as he's up over the 60 yard mark, or actually the 54 yards after that first down carry. I'll tell you guys, even with, if the Huskies cannot pull it out today, it is a big cloud lifted off these players that will be back next year in the program and for the coaching staff. Uh, no more sanctions and uh, they'll be able to at least compete for a bowl next year. You know, in the old days when I played, at this stage you knew you weren't going to go anywhere because the Rose Bowl has already been decided and it was always tough to keep your focus at this stage of a ball game. Sparks again, spins away. Lawyer Malloy again. Well, you also got to give a lot of credit to the coaching staff. Uh, Jim Lambright and his crew have done a, a, a very complimentary job of keeping the seniors in the program, keeping the younger players uh, still enthusiastic about Washington football, and you know that they're going to be a power to deal with. Coach Lambright and his staff, a quality group with first-class uh, intentions all the way around, and uh, the next season, you know that they'll be back uh, looking for Another winning season under Jim Lambright. Well, they've played a lot of people this year, Cleet, and, and a lot of game experience, and so we'll have a good class coming back next year. Derek Sparks with his 100th carry of the season and his fifth in a row on this drive. On the Cougar side of it, this has been a great year for Mike Price and his staff. The beginning of the year, picked to be last in the Pac-10, ending up which looks like it's going to be a 7-4 and four year with really a couple nail fighters that uh, they could have pulled them off. They'd had even a sensational year, but really a great job by everybody, and the Cougar seniors will be rewarded with a bowl trip, and, and this really sends them into that bowl game with a much better taste in their mouth coming off a tough loss against Oregon State. Ron Lewis reset in his stance and got hammered. And guess what we're going to see? Uh, those little arms <laughs> flashing back and forth. And, uh, there he goes. That might be our play of the day at the end of this game is William Richardson and his spinning handwork. There's Mike Price again, making sure that the communication is delivered as he's halfway out on the field. These are big games for this Cougar crowd. They love to win here in the Palouse, especially against...